It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Wow, do we have a great show, a long one too, but listen to every minute because it's so good. Not only are Andy and Akko and Alex Lindsay here, but joining us in studio, Jason Snell, Serenity Caldwell, Renee Ritchie. They were all at the Apple event yesterday. Their firsthand impressions of the Apple Watch, the MacBook, and more coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 445, recorded Tuesday, March 10th, 2015. Meerkat Inception. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by LegalZoom. It's National Start Your Business Month at LegalZoom and the best time to create the business you've always dreamed of. LegalZoom's not a law firm, but they can connect you with an independent attorney. Visit LegalZoom.com and use the offer code MBW in the referral box to save even more. And by Squarespace. Squarespace is the easiest way to create a beautiful website, blog, or online store for you and your ideas. Go to Squarespace.com and enter the offer code MacBreak at checkout to get 10% off. And by Harry's. For guys who want a great shave experience for a fraction of what you're paying now, go to harrys.com. Get $5 off your first purchase by entering the code MACBREAK when you check out. It's time for MacBreak Weekly, the show where we cover the latest Apple news, and there's a lot of news. Fortunately, there's a lot of people here. <laughs> I'm going to start all the way to the right. Andy Anako from the Chicago Sun Times. Great to have you here. <laughs> hey, Leo. You're kind of out in right field today. That's okay. This is where the deep the deep flies hit, and also where you can get a good nap. <laughs> and you can talk to the fans out there. As long as they don't exactly. throw hot dogs at you, you're okay. To your right is Jason Snell. I'm at first base today. At first base. <laughs> so it's, Hello. it's baseball season. Yeah, absolutely. Sixcolors.com. It's great, great to, to be here. You. Yeah, welcome. Uh, I'm so thrilled. I, I didn't realize this. We'd never met in person. I know. It's, it's Serenity kind of Caldwell is here. I'm very happy to be here. From um, Imore. Yes. Nice from to have Imore you. in Boston. It's nice to be in weather oh, that I bet. Uh, doesn't require a parka. I bet. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. Same with you, right? Renee Ritchie from Imore.com. Yeah, this is summer. This is just yeah. wonderful. We're not even, we're actually having chilly, <laughs> chilly weather. I hate to say it. I was hoping we'd have nice warm weather for you guys. We're running down the street in short sleeves, Leo. <laughs> yeah, I blast. went to the beach on Saturday. I'm happy. <laughs> Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> and all the way on the left there. From, are you in Zimbabwe or Pittsburgh? I'm in uh, Rwanda, actually. I try, but it's hard to keep track of him. Alex Lindsay, <laughs> the peripatetic Alex Lindsay from pixelcore.com. I knew that. Rwanda. You're in Kilgale again. Yeah, I've been banished. I got banished to the studio today, so they were, they were doing work in the, in the classroom. It actually looks so. cool. I got a jib coming out of it's, your ear. It's, and, it's nice. Yeah, yeah, I know. They were working on something. They were working on some oh, shoes. I love it. They had furniture in here before. So, uh, so anyway, yeah. It's like I'm talking to J.J. Abrams on the set of Star Wars. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, Just polish up your R2-D2. <laughs> so three <laughs> out of the six here, half of the panel was at the event yesterday. Jason, uh, Serenity, and uh, Renee. And uh, really, the event isn't such a big deal because we saw that all on streaming. But you got to handle stuff. Right. Fondle, maybe. Mm -hmm. Fondle it. I want to start with not the watch because this isn't that wasn't there wasn't much new there, but with uh, the MacBook, which was rumored, uh, but the rumor came true. Yeah. All my dreams. It's all real. <laughs> came true, and I was having a little fight in the chat room with some people in the <laughs> chat who said, "Oh, that's that's a crappy computer. Who would want a computer?" We're talking about the new MacBook. Two pounds, uh, sixteen millimeters thick, which is not much thicker than an iPad, really. No. Mm -mm. And uh, but one connector, the USB C connector. Um, Jason, is that too few? I mean, you're I actually use you as an example. I've got Serenity, I see you two. Both eleven of you inch are using chairs, eleven yeah. inches. Uh, you know, um, I would say I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that anybody who's in an IRC chat room watching a live stream of this week in tech <laughs> shows probably has a lot of wires. Maybe coming. not the people who yeah. this product is is for. I mean, yeah. this probably this is not. the iPad of laptops. Yep. It's meant to be super simple. Um, it's meant to be the laptop that's at the edge of Apple's product line of laptops. It, it the MacBook as a product means there's room for the MacBook Pro, right? I mean, that's the, well, and they didn't get rid the name. Of either the Air or the Pro. That's right. 
Will they, Serenity? Is that is this kind of the beginning of the end for the year? This might be the the burgeoning of a new MacBook Empire, uh, but I don't necessarily huh. think that it's going to come in the next six months. Right. I mean, you. Apple spent a surprising amount of time on wireless specs during uh, during their presentation on how, oh, wireless is the future. You don't want to be tethered to wires. You want right. all day battery life. You right. want wireless Beats headphones. Right. You want to, you know, you want to live a wireless life if you're using a laptop. But they're right, I um, think. No, I think they're absolutely right. I don't know if we're quite there yet. I mean, we were talking before the show. You were taking photos and then you were tapping, you know, using NFC to tap them to your right. phone. Wireless. Um, you, yeah, wireless, which is great, but it's a little bit harder to do that with a DSLR to a Mac right now. You know, right. there is an NFC support, um, and AirDrop doesn't exactly work with a Sony or a Canon camera. Um, so there are there are still things that, you know, you might need some wires for currently. And also, you know, there was a, uh, at, at the event, Apple's like, all day battery life. And I'm like, wait, is this, is this true? Are we going to get, you know, 12, yeah, 14 all, hours? The day just got shorter. <laughs> it's the same, it's the same nine, 10 hour battery right. life of the, um, uh, that the, uh, the iPad and also the right. 11 inch air, what the 11 inch air starts at. You get it nine. nine hours? Now the In 13, theory. the 13 inch MacBook gets, uh, more. Yes. 13 like hours. 10 to 12? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But but the, an Apple usually is a little more conservative. You know, it's funny. Uh, somebody was comparing it to the Dell XPS 13 and said, but the Dell XPS 13 gets 15 hours. In your dreams, that's Dell's mm -hmm. spec. It gets much more like five or six hours. Mm -hmm. And Antec is really good about busting those sorts of yeah. myths because they, they have really good battery tests. But well, I, f I forget the manufacturer. It was one It was one of the Korean manufacturers. They included you being asleep for 12 hours in their battery. <laughs> that's what typical with phones. Yeah. You see that a lot in the phone specs. where it, Oh, yeah, but they, you never turn it on. It, it's oh, yeah, hours, of it, course. 24 hours battery life if you're sleeping for 12. <laughs> Stand by. Mm. Uh, Apple's usually pretty... Right on, I think. Yeah, they get scrutinized heavily for it. So if you get, if you're in the crosshairs, you have to be really honest. So a few okay. years ago, they changed their yes. testing methods to be much more based in reality. And they're the people who do a lot of their performance testing are people who used to do performance testing in public for computer magazines and yes. things. And it, they're they're real numbers. I mean, they're never going to give you a number that it really makes them look in a bad light. But I think the numbers they give you are based on tests that are fairly real. And even yeah. yesterday with the event, they for the watch, they um, they put up a page explaining exactly what they meant what when they said it. Almost life, like a parallel, yeah. like, wait, before you yeah. get angry at us, this yeah. is exactly what you're doing on that. <laughs> Andy, you, uh, I think it was you who um, said it would be nice to have a 4G sol solution in the MacBook. It does feel like that would be, that would really put it over the top. Yeah, it feels like that would be a natural thing, given that it seems as though the design aesthetic was let's make an iPad only, let's split, let's find a way to split it into a MacBook, an iPad Air, and fold it open. Uh, and so you really kind of feel like you want to have mobile broadband in there. When you look at the internals on it, you wonder where would they, f a SIM card is this big after all, where would they find room for it inside there? <laughs> And they, they can squeeze it. It's <laughs> they have an issue with the licensing, too, because uh, especially if you want to use it in the U.S., you need CDMA still for Verizon. And oh. that means you've got to double the licensing fees you pay to yeah. Qualcomm. And Qualcomm's licensing fees, it's a rumor. No one's ever confirmed it. But you pay on retail, not on wholesale price. Oh, and so it could be up to 100 bucks or more oh, per computer. This is why iOS 8 and, uh, and Yosemite added this super fancy, friendly tethering yeah. feature is, you know, I think Apple's official policy now is, use your phone. look, use your phone. It's really easy. Once you set it up, it just works. They said that and during the event. We don't, have to, we don't have to worry about yeah. it. This is the adapter Apple's going to sell you. And I think if you take a MacBook home, you probably want to take home this $79 USB-C digital AV multi-port adapter, which gives you uh, HDMI, full HDMI out, mm -hmm. full USB and power. So, Basically, now with this little dongle, you plug this into the Type C, and you can power up. You can have USB, and you can have. Uh, Holy like, crap! Is that elegant? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's like an, an, Audi, an, it's, it's an adapter. Oh. I mean, I, I'm a little surprised that they didn't come out with a really nice Apple designed hub that was sort of like like look, a dock. If almost. you want to dock this, yeah. here's the, here's a dock. A and it's PowerBook Duo style. And yeah, mm -hmm. I know. It, it, that would be nice. I'm sure some third party will, but it would be nice to have something that plugs in there and will throw out, you know, video and a few USB ports. And I'll tell you why like, Apple did not do they that. They didn't do it. They want to really emphasize the idea yeah. that this, that some people will compute this way. I notice I rarely plug in, well, this is an exception here, but this is an unusual situation. Mm -hmm. But at, with my laptop, I, I rarely plug anything but power into it. I think only when I'm, only when I'm docked. Somewhere, and right. I think is that a really common use case where, where you're docked somewhere and you're sitting on a table and you've got a bunch of drives plugged in, and and I think they would say, well, we got a MacBook I Pro for, for the you. show. I try yeah. to plug a mic in and a camera. <laughs> but and that's for the show. <laughs> yeah, and so those those of us who do that will yeah. buy a Mac yeah. Pro or a MacBook Air even. Mm -hmm. um, I think well, there's I, a I, big market for people who are never going to plug it in. Alex. 
Yeah, I, well, I, and I have to say the, the, the thing that concerns me was a real naysayer when um, when Andy said that you'll really miss the Ethernet cable. And I miss the Ethernet cable about once a yeah. week. Um, yeah. And so, you know, <laughs> I'm just always like, I can't believe they got rid of the Ethernet cable. And so, uh, uh, you know, it's, it, it is something that, you know, what's going to happen is, is that we're going to forget the dongle. The dongle is going to be in the other bag. Yeah. The, you know, you're not going to be able to connect to anything. So I think that, that that's a big concern from, one, my, from one, my perspective. One, I have to say they also spec'd it out. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it starts at 8 gigs of RAM. It starts with a 256 gig SSD. Uh, is that they said new two times faster SSDs in all of the MacBooks? What are what are, what is is that a EMMC or MMC or some other sort of I don't know uh, the SLC. details. No, I don't know either. Yeah, twice as fast. And that that they also announced that there was options for the higher end uh, right. MacBooks as well. Mm -hmm. I, and I I have to I think that one of the things nobody's really said much of, but is huge is that Apple didn't develop a proprietary single port solution. Mm -hmm. This is a standard. Yeah. And uh, USB Type C, I think this is going to jumpstart that. I hope it jumpstarts that. So my only concern is that, like, like you, you and I have gone back and forth about our cinema displays because the original one was the LED display, and that just had DisplayPort. Right. And then the new one was the Thunderbolt display, and you used Thunderbolt. Right. And now the Type C connector supports DisplayPort, but not Thunderbolt, which is DisplayPort plus PCI. And it's my yes. guess that the video on that is, as has been in the past, non-standard. It's not. I, there is a video standard for Type C, and I guarantee you, Apple's not using it. Is what I'm saying. Well, it sounds like it can, it can transit DisplayPort, so the video should be fine. And I believe if they it said does that, a pass yeah, it, yeah, so you can throw mm -hmm. out up to 4K video from this computer. Nice. Um, it's just I don't know when my Thunderbolt monitor is going to work now. Am <laughs> I not going to get sound? Am I going to? Is it going to pass through the sound over you? Apple I just, has never a had a problem killing, you know, products that they have dead. still no. in the store today, <laughs> or a fire, like FireWire 400, yep. then 800, and then nothing. And uh, I, 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 Thunderbolt did not get traction and i think taking taking a step back and saying well let's use just a standard usb type c maybe then we'll get some help from pc makers i i look for one thing you know intel will release in a few months a reference design of an exact clone of the macbook yes. just as they did with the mm -hmm. macbook air mm -hmm. and then pc makers will make it and we'll see type c everywhere and this might be a much better thing it doesn't do everything Thunderbolt did. No. It, it's just because Thunderbolt was the hub. The Thunderbolt display was Apple's version of the hub. You but plug into Thunderbolt that. didn't do power, which is interesting. No, so. it didn't. But yeah. it would give you the Ethernet adapter on this display. Right. It would give you the multiple USB ports. It would right. give you all this stuff. And you could daisy chain multiple devices. And now I'm wondering if the next Thunderbolt display will be that for the new MacBook. There'll be a, a Type C that'll go in and it'll have a yeah. Apple's out of the display 4K business. 4K USB 3.0 display. I think display. Apple's out of the display <laughs> business. Think so? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think know. they're out of the desktop business. <laughs> I really do. I feel like this is... Retina, Retina 5K iMac? <laughs> I love that. Yeah. But, that's yeah. not, but that's not a standalone display because it can't be. No, right. not yet. Not yet. Maybe not ever. The, the new DisplayPort standard is going to support that you know, in, in, a, in a single cable monitor. I you Apple doesn't care. I, th I thought we'd have 4K displays from Apple by now. I think they can make a display with uh, really nice margins that they'll sell to people with a Mac Pro. Yeah, they I, think, have I think it'll happen. They have those displays. They just need the chipsets and the computers that support them. And that's why I think Thunderbolt isn't going to completely vanish. I think Thunderbolt's going to still be on a lot it's of a systems a pro, a as a as a yeah. super high fast. You know, it's way faster than in, than USB 3.1 that you can put a whole bunch of uh, other stuff off of it. I think it'll stick around, but um, you know we'll see how USB C goes here because we may see a lot less of it. It may become want. like FireWire did at the end. And we should say this is not end. a new USB spec. This is just no. a new USB connector. Yeah. So it's no faster than USB three one, right? Am no, right? it's it's yeah. it's yeah. USB three yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, help but, helpful people in the chat room pointing out it is and, uh, and spec one of the three point one. Right. And one of the things that, that we that we've noticed, I mean, we're, we're very touchy about the performance, and and we do find that there's a certain level of overhead with USB that you you, you wouldn't normally yes. have with Thunderbolt mm -hmm. or it's with a HD, server, HDMI. It's not, yeah. it's not so this is here. yeah, right. So it's going to put more pressure. This is going to put more pressure on the on a small computer than than a a, a raw HDMI cable would. But I do have to point out, Thunderbolt instance. has just not taken off, right? I mean, it's not. It's true. In the pro it's market expensive, alone, expensive. It's hard to license. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I have a Thunderbolt dock at home for, for that I use for this and. It's, it's super expensive, and it's great, and I hope that there's something like that for USB-C, but it's it's ridiculous. And I, I really, we all hope that Thunderbolt would be much more readily available than, it, than it's become. Yeah. It just, I think well, some of that has to do with the Intel the licensing. Bought, and I'm, the, I'm one of 10 idiots that bought the little big disc <laughs> for tw 1269 bucks for a terabyte. It's perfect for your Mac Pro. Oh, it looks but, good with a yeah, Mac Pro. Yeah, it does. And it's well, and I, and state, I, so. <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't like, okay, this is really one percenter. This is one-tenth of one percent. I don't like using spinning drives because I hear them. Yeah. And the Mac Pro is silent and the Thunderbolt 2 is silent. And I put a spinning disc and suddenly, I, what's all that noise? It's a drive. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, and I think that, you know, it, it hasn't been successful on a consumer level or prosumer level, but on the pro level, I mean, Thunderbolt is everywhere. I mean, is I mean, it? Ha oh, mm -hmm. yeah, we just have an enormous number of our pieces of equipment that have Thunderbolt built yeah. into them. And and we couldn't do what we do without without something that fast, you know, and, and it's really changed. But it's got to be a small part of the market. And Apple's turned its back on yeah. the pro market, haven't they? It was telling when there was a big deal that Focus, the new uh, movie that uh, just came out, uh, was the first movie edited on Final Cut in Hollywood in five well, years. The there's, first the pro, there's the pro movie. software yeah. market Mainstream. and the pro hardware market. I mean, the Mac Pro is a really good, popular, professional tool. The MacBook the, Pro is great, too. And, the and it got the new too. trackpad, too. Yeah. It wasn't ignored. Oh, the forced... The MacBook Force Pro was terrible. What is it called? The Force Touch. Uh, technically, it's the taptic, the trackpad powered by a taptic engine, but it comes with Force Touch, which uh, which is a fancy way of saying that the trackpad, uh, despite not having physical components, is pressure sensitive and tries to fool your brain into right. thinking that you're it actually clicking. It doesn't try. It, it succeeds. Yeah. It, so, does. it so does. So you guys tried it. It makes you oh, think yeah. that physics has been a lie because yep. you know that you're not pushing anything, but your finger, like your brain you like knows that it's not, but your finger feels like yeah. it. And you know intellectually it's moving sideways, but it feels like it's moving up and down and your brain just wants to melt because it's you. It, like, <laughs> if you stop thinking about it, it's fine, but if yeah. you start to think about it, it's just complete the it, new magic. Magic trackpad with haptic interface and brain melting I want a brain melting trackpad yeah, with this. I, I would really well, like to see a magic trackpad with this. The exciting thing to me is not so much the trackpad. I mean, the track, you know, the tra a trackpad's about this big, but the fact that they jump so quickly from the watch, which is here, to the trackpad, which is here. They've been working on this technology for with four or force, five years. Force stuff. Force yeah. touch and haptic feedback. Is basically. it hard to do? No. Um, it, well, hard to do well, I think. Yeah. Um, I, well, they have been working on it for quite a number of years to really, really make it feel like something. It's just that, a button that you yeah. press hard. But it's, it's not a, a button. Sense. It's not a button. That's the tricky thing. It's a, it's glass. And what it is is basically vibrations that make you think that you're uh, pressing further yeah. down. So it's you not like swear. a Wacom tablet that has pressure sensitivity. Well, it is. It's, doing, it, it, yeah. it's pressure sensitive, but then what your pressure will kick off this little vibration and it makes it feel like you click down, except it, it didn't oh, move oh, down. Oh, the vibration is yes. what's tricking it's your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So, and the the really cool thing, at least on the Mac, is that they're going to open that up as an API for developers and you, you, they haven't officially revealed how many levels of pressure sensitivity, you know, on Wacom tablets you hear like 1024, 2048 right. levels. Um, Apple hasn't really done anything specific with that, but they have a, they have a couple of uh, examples, especially at the, what they were showing at the event. They showed off, for instance, QuickTime, which had I think four or five different mm -hmm. uh, click levels where you were yeah. fast forwarding or rewinding through a video, and as you pressed Hard, and the harder you press, yeah, you could feel each individual, yeah, each individual click, and it's like a gas pedal where you start oh. to press down and you can see it going further, That's and you can feel as you go like ramp, 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 and then as you let up. It slows it down again. Back. Yeah. See, I think that's a very interesting idea because it does give you some physical feedback. Yeah, the developer that, can make little curves, and wow. whenever a curve reaches, you have to press harder to go through it, and they can set those in the. In Andy, the we're, I think you were a little skeptical about losing the the physical click. Uh, well, I was reacting back then to Mark Gurman's report about this device, which was very incomplete in a couple of important places. Uh, it only mentioned that there was no more clicky button underneath the trackpad, uh, which would have implied that uh, it's going to a 100% tap-to-click interface, which would have been a bummer for me because I just can't get used to tap-to-click. I'm always misfiring it. Another thing that he didn't get correct if I'm assuming that I'm, I was reading his piece correctly is that he seemed to be saying that the physical keyboard was going to be narrower and they're making they're putting the keys closer together to make the keyboard fit on the plane that they're putting it into when as a matter of fact the opposite is true it's the exact same width as a standard keyboard but they changed the 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 gap between uh, keys to make the keys actually physically larger and easier to hit so I mean, overall, what my, my reaction to that definition was that I don't like, uh, I wouldn't have liked it if they were making a $3,000 professional notebook that you have to really make a lot of adjustments for. The fact that they're making something that is so radically slim and so radically light, that means that some allowances uh, are allowable in even the lack of ports, but I'm so appreciative that Apple said, well, it's not, it won't do to simply make everybody switch to touch to click. We're going to give you something that will trade off on that. It wouldn't be okay for us to force people to adapt to a smaller keyboard, even if we have to create an entirely new type of key switch to give some somebody something like the feel that they would have on a regular keyboard. We're going to do that too. So I, I, that, there's practically nothing about this design that uh, I don't like overall. 
I noticed that I actually uh, turn on the tap to click anyway on my MacBook, oh. on all my MacBooks. I, I hate tap to click, and I can tell you <laughs> this is not tap to click. This no, is, not even remotely. But so this, somebody if like you me didn't who's know, happy if, with tap to click will be even more happy. If you didn't know yeah. that this was a fraud perpetrated on you <laughs> yes. by pressure sensitivity and a, a, a little vibrating engine under the thing, you would not know that they took out the, the yeah. push-down click. You would not yeah. know. Unless, it's, now, if they tell the, you, then your brain melts. But why do you, you hate know. tap to click? Uh, because I just I just do I I miss tap yeah. all the time. Yeah, I'll give you a great example. Yeah. When I have tap to click on, especially on my Magic Trackpad on my iMac, when I'm typing on my keyboard, uh, um, if I even remotely brush the Magic tap, Trackpad, yeah, it thinks you yeah. tapped and it'll move. Like I'll be typing, it'll jump three paragraphs up, and then all of a sudden, half of a word I was typing ends <laughs> up in another word. And it's like it's a it's a nice idea, but it doesn't feel concrete. And this really feels concrete. It's funny. It's a very polarizing thing because I see other people in the chat room saying I hate tap to click, yeah. but I love it. And I turn it on immediately. And when I can't turn it on, I get pissed off. I have a. <laughs> the and the tap computers. to click is still there. I mean, the, the, yeah. the important yeah, no, thing but here this is, sounds this, like is this is perfect for me. This is a good now. Like what are, are they going to put this in the iPhone? Wouldn't that well, be interesting? So that's this is what I'm really excited about is that we've got this technology. They finally kind of ironed it out. Um, there are all these rumors about an iPad Pro with pressure sensitivity, Ooh. and this is, I mean, if they if they institute <clears throat> force touch in the Taptic engine in an iPad, think about this. Imagine a keyboard, a virtual keyboard on your iPad that when you tap the keys, you it feel feels it. like you're actually tapping wow. keys. And when you're drawing, you can actually tell the line differentials. Um, and certain developers can put in things that when you tap a button, a physical button, it actually gives a reverberation. Goes, <coughs> yeah, I So mean, you could do it for the full screen? In theory. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not necessarily, yeah. I just don't like, I, I think physical home buttons are a throwback. Well, I, oh, yeah. Th that was my first thought when I saw this get was you button. could get rid of the home button on the iPhone with this yeah. technology. Which is where people complaining mm -hmm. that they want smaller screens, actually want smaller phones, and then you can liberate a lot of the space right. in the casing. Well, well and it's it, also, you're, you're eliminating a, f a point of failure because anything that moves... Right. It was reassuring for a generation of people moving to touchscreen right. technology. It gave them something big and clicky to target. A button, yeah. But the th cool thing with this is, like, uh, they were showing an icon on your desktop. You press a little bit, and it just gets bigger so you can see what the document says. You press a little bit harder, and it gives you a preview. A little bit harder, and it goes to the preview app. It's just on the on on how far you're pressing right. into the. So it's We're like multi. Have to get used to this. It's like oh, multi touch it's, yeah. going deep instead of just being yeah. all around you. You can now multi touch into. But you things. guys were using it for the first time and you only use it for a short period of time and you still felt like you kind of. It was a big learning curve and then it got okay. And it was okay quickly. Yeah, yes. I th I think it's definitely something that's going to take some getting used to. But I noticed like on Twitter, a lot of people have been like, "Oh, people are apologizing for Apple making you know things that are half hearted. Oh, we're going to have to get used to this." And I'm like, "No, it's just so different and so completely unlike any trackpad you've ever used." And same thing with the keyboard the new like slimmer design keyboard is so with the butterfly design is so different than your traditional scissor keyboard that the first time a couple times you type on it you're like whoa yeah, there's no wobbling. and then well exactly yeah. it's just it's very different and i feel like i so was you actually pounding. felt like it was you know, i guess my keys wobbled i never noticed at that the edges, no, you don't. Like little teeter totters you but don't you at all. now don't you see this feels different it definitely so the first couple times that i was typing on it um i realized that i was actually shaking the 12 inch macbook because i <laughs> end up pounding, pounding. Yeah, yeah, because because you hit, especially with the MacBook Air keys, you know, you hit it the wrong way, and, like, I could hit the R without actually hitting the R. You, you know, this is going to be a problem, though, because now you have a product line that has radically different user interfaces within the product line. You've got a MacBook Air and MacBook Pro, which works completely differently. Well, the actually, Pro, the Pro yeah. is going to have the, the, Pro's gonna the have trackpad, but not the yeah. keys, yeah. or will mm -hmm. it? Will it have the new No, keys? just the trackpad, but it, it's, it's a... Turbulence. It is during a time of change. Yeah. Like this is very similar to the MacBook Air when it first came out. Is it gives you a glimpse yeah. of what the future and like Broadwell's not that powerful right now. Broadwell, why that they're using this, but they're, they're getting this product out, and then you and I will buy it. And normal people will get it like in a year or two. I it's think it's no. I think it's going to be a hit because I think most people don't need the the high end power. I think most people, if they think about it, don't plug in a lot of keys nope. uh, as cables into their stuff. Uh, you know, my camera card. I'd like to be able to plug that in, but you can get an adapter to do that. Um, I think Apple's to, this is what happens when you innovate. People go, oh, and then. My mom texted me during the event. My mom has had an iMac that she's never used in two years since she got her iPad. Yeah. She said, this is the first laptop I actually wanted to buy. It just looks it so looks simple beautiful. and easy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alex is, a, is obviously not the market for this. And yet I bet you, <laughs> I bet you at home it might yep. use this, right? You know, I was I was uh, I was secretly fearing that they would that they would make me feel bad about buying a Surface Three, and they did not. 
Um, oh, so, ow. Yeah, so. God. <laughs> Jeez. You know, I, I, First a you know, Windows the, phone, now a Surface 3? What is wrong Alex, with you? Alex, I don't, you're, I don't, you're I don't have a Windows phone. love and safety. <laughs> I don't have a Windows phone. I don't have a Windows phone. I, 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 just, have a, I just have the Surface 3 because I got tired. I'm sorry, an Android phone. And then oh, Surface yeah, I have an Android you're phone. You're slipping. Yeah, I always have you're sliding uh, you into know, the other. I still got, I still got, I still got <laughs> no, a lot of, I got a lot of iPads. It. So anyway, yeah, but the, um, uh, I, I just really feel like I get the whole argument that, that, you know, they have to redesign the whole interface and everything else, but I'm using Windows in a regular Windows interface and touching stuff and being able to draw on things and being able to, so you and want for me touch. mostly, from a business perspective, I just want to be able to mark up PDFs. Like that's all I want. You know, yeah. like people send me stuff and I have to draw on it and say, you know, don't no move the cameras over here and this is the way this is going to go and this is how you know. I just want to be able to write on it and I do all of that now on a Surface on a Surface Three. You know, and 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 I was looking at this going. You know, I, I just got one, and I know what they're going to do. They're going to put something out with a touchscreen, and then they didn't. And then I was like, okay, well, I can wait now. I don't so, think you Apple's know, ever going to do a touchscreen. I really feel like that this is not. Well, they've the cards. done. They've done it. They've tested it. They don't like it. Yeah, I mean, I think if there's going to be a touch yeah. screen, it's going to be an iPad Pro. It's going to have force touch yeah. technology, and then that allows I want you to. That. Yeah, yeah. If, I'm. I'm really yeah, I never excited. Never thought of that, mm -hmm. but if they do that, I want that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And 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 the problem for me is that I don't like the. I don't like the iOS uh, file structure, you know. So from a professional's perspective, yeah. I just can't move things quickly from one app to the other. I mean, I know they're working on it, but it's still like this this rigmarole rather than I just save it out and then I open it up, or you know. And and I have a lot of trouble with that process of getting things done, you know, in iOS the way I need to get them, you know, at the speed that I need to get them done, and being able to touch. And so, you know, I, I think that they will eventually do it, but I think that as these as the two OSs kind of keep on moving closer together, eventually we see something that you can touch and you can type on, but. Um, it's probably still another year. And people complain when you stopped point. having a floppy disk. Then they complain when you stopped having an optical disk. Yeah. And then they complain. And and the truth is, I never use optical disks. And now there's no one left to complain. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's one Who of the great. Apple? I yeah. think that's one of the great things about about a product like this from Apple is it bugs the crap out of people, right? But at the same time, I love that Apple is saying, what's a laptop going to look like in five years? The, let's yeah. let's start they that have the now. They have to innovate, I and, think, and to take a chance. Right, and yeah. like the original MacBook Air. This one is probably not going to be 100% of the way there. I used that original Air. It was really painful. Yeah, me too. They said the same thing it at was the time. It was painful because it was underpowered, right? It yeah. was underpowered and it overheated and all these things. It was too, it was too early. Do you think we'll see that janky. with a MacBook? I think they've learned some lessons there. I don't think it'll be the same problems, but there's going to be this time of transition pain yeah. where somebody says, oh, I need to I need to charge my laptop and plug in this. Oh, I can't do that. Suddenly I need to do like a lot that. of video and I'm at an event. I, I, yeah. Right. I, I'm I, I need to uh, connect to a projector. Do yeah. you have this adapter? No, nobody has that adapter. It's only on this one laptop. <laughs> All of that stuff is going to happen. But um, I love the fact that that Apple is, is taking the bullets on stuff like this yes. and saying, look, we want to make that laptop that does some stuff that other laptops laptops don't do and it is going to cause pain in the short term but Andy, I think it's a good thing. One thing that strikes me Andy is and I'd like to get your take on this is this is part of a of a move all along from Apple to expand its consumer to kind of more appeal to real people. Apple's always been the 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 for the rest of us computer. This MacBook seems like it's for the rest of us. It's for the vast majority of people who don't need all that superpower. I I agree with that. Uh I, that's also why um after my initial reaction to the proposed idea of a shrunken down keyboard a little bit uh it made me think that uh maybe the people who are going to be buying this are people who are already typing on smaller keyboards for their ipads or the idea of having a full-size keyboard might be something that people are just going to have to deal with uh and you're right i mean people have to apple has to start addressing the market that is going to be spending money next year the year after that five years from now the people who already have a, a MacBook they're very, very satisfied with, they're not buying Macs for the next two or three or four or five years. My only, uh, I do have one objection, though, and that's, it's, there, there is something laudable about Apple always having an idea of, look, this, this, this feature that we're working so hard to implement is going to be completely irrelevant in three years. Let's save ourselves a lot of trouble. Let's also, uh, the, let's also help a lot, help the obsolescence of this thing by not supporting it uh, in this new generation of hardware. That's, that's very laudable. But the thing is, if you want to buy a laptop that runs Mac OS, you've got three choices. And if one of them is completely unsuitable for your use, 33% of 
every Mac laptop everywhere in the world is unsuitable for your use. It's not like uh, the situation in Windows where someone could, uh, Sony could do something as weird as, you know what, we've got a super slim Windows notebook. We're going to find a way to wedge a standard VGA connector onto the side of that. We're going to angle it. We're going to have this really weird scissor valve. But we just this thing that there are a lot of people who really don't want to have to travel with special adapters. They can make one of these weirdo one-off machines, and there's going to be a, a, a small percentage point that's going to really, really love that. So let's praise Apple for doing that, but let's also uh, let's also uh, acknowledge that when they ship a Mac Pro that has a lot of deficiencies, you're screwed. If you need a pro-level Mac laptop, you're screwed. You have to get used to the idea of it that it has a really bad keyboard. You have to get used to the idea that you have to travel with lots of dongles. You have to get used to the idea that you can't upgrade it because that's all you have available to you. Um, it's a kind of interesting. The chat room is very negative uh, on this, uh, which kind of surprises me a little bit. But the chief complaint they have is 1299 See, I actually think that that's a perfectly acceptable price when you think about what's being built in the machine. I think it's, I yeah. think it's fine. Yeah. Uh, the problem yeah, is the you. PC manufacturers have established this ridiculous price point of three to five hundred dollars. Oh, absolutely! And Apple will never make well, a net. You know, Apple's never going to make a netbook. Apple's never going to do anything right. like that. Um, well, and, and and when you look at that, I mean, one of the that's how you get Lenovo putting you know stuff into your computer. They're trying to figure out some other place to find a margin because they created a number that isn't workable. Yeah, um, I no, I'm twelve ninety nine again. That's when you that's when you get Lenovo and Com and Commodia and yeah. Superficial because <laughs> All of those, they have yeah. to make some money. Oh, let's yeah. remember that the MacBook Air started that first one was like twenty four hundred dollars, and if you wanted to add an SSD, it was an extra thousand on top of that. And now it's eight starts yeah. at eight ninety nine. And it is eight gigs of RAM. It is a two hundred fifty six gig display. SSB. The it's retina, a retina display. display. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the big thing. I the 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 big complaint that I've heard is that the thirteen inch MacBook Pro and the this new 12-inch MacBook start at the same price. And the argument is, well, why wouldn't I just buy a 13-inch MacBook Pro? Well, if you ask that question, and you should buy a 13-inch yeah, MacBook Pro. Absolutely. It's not, absolutely should buy that. But a 13-inch MacBook Pro is a pound and a half yeah, heavier. Yeah. And I mean, if, I want the thin and light. Uh, you know. We were talking about this yesterday. If you take a, an original iPad in its case, it's about two pounds. It's about as right. thick as this. And you basically right. just split that in half, and it runs OS X. Yeah. But let, let's not let's not have an equivalency between these two devices. I I, I, I fully support the, the the new MacBook because it exists at least for now between the less expensive, very light machine and the easy as expensive or slightly more expensive machine that's a little bit more convenient to use and requires fewer sacrifices. I think that that's a really good sort of portfolio of laptops to have. I do think that in the next two or three years, the price of the MacBook is going to drop down to replace the MacBook Airline. Uh, and when that happens, we're going to start to have these problems where people are going to be, going to be saying, gee, Windows 10 is now really, really good. I they I can buy a not a three hundred dollar or four hundred dollar Windows notebook, but a seven or eight hundred dollar notebook that is as good as this eleven hundred dollar model that Apple is doing. And because I'm not the same kind of user that the people that in this uh, in this conversation are, I can easily adapt from one machine to another. And I just don't like this thing that is the only thing that's available to me. What about the processor? I think that that may be some reason people are concerned. So what do we know about this M? process this is a, it's broadwell it's, it's broadwell 14 nanometer as far as i know it's why yeah. which uh, in fact is i don't think anybody's using that yet is are they no it's hard it's so it's hard to first keep track of intel seen. because the broadwell was supposed to be out so long the ago U, the u came out at ces <laughs> yes. and i think the x dell and the novo and the hp are all using the u yeah so this is the first time we've seen this mobile part and well, it's, how did it feel? Did it feel snappy? Did it feel slow? So if, like, again, my what I do with my computer, I don't know if I'll be able to do with that, like all the Final Cut Pro and things like that. But for web, I, I took it, I shook it around. There was no lag. I, I think for what most people Safari, do, and most the, of the eight gigs asking, of RAM is more yeah, important than the process. And most people were asking me, like, does it scroll smoothly? Because for them, that's like that's right. what nails on a chalkboard is if the scrolling is off. And I scrolled through Safari. I scrolled through No the hesitation. Photos. Yeah. It, it I always go to the Verge site to see. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I can scroll the Verge, yeah. that's got to be <laughs> fast. <laughs> it is. In fact, on, the Chrome, on a lot of the early Chromebooks, I could not scroll the Verge smoothly. Yeah. And that told me this is not an, uh, this is underpowered. Yeah. And I mean, I don't, again, I think it's a compromise, right? I don't think that the Core M processor is the processor that they really wanted in that 12-inch Retina MacBook Air. But for what they were able to afford and put into that machine and the thinness that they wanted, it was the right move. Not just the dollar budget, but the power budget. Five Absolutely. watts. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. And I mean, you think about how much of that computer is shoved full of batteries and the battery <laughs> improvement technology that they made for that terrorist. computer. Terrorist. They're terrorist. Yeah, the ter terrorist <laughs> By batteries. By the way, <laughs> as usual with Apple, they didn't, they're not the first 
laptop even to use that. That's been around for at least a year. I think they've used it previously. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that's marketing. Right. But uh, you understand why this more looks, if, if you look at the layout, more looks like an iPad where the tiny motherboard yeah. mm -hmm. and a lot of battery. And I think unlike uh, Broadwell, I think Intel is on track for Skylake, which means that Skylake Y will probably make an appearance not too far. So that in the confirms future. what you're saying, Jason, which is don't get the first one, get get the second one. Well, you know, if you buy the first one of anything, you're going to be living on the cutting edge, and you're yeah. taking a risk. Well, and, you're paying you to know. get it now. Like it's the same thing with the watch and with this. If you can you can buy it now, and all you're doing is getting it earlier. Like you're not you don't want the final version. You want to be part of the process getting there. I just you know early and, believers, not just early adopters. And I yeah. know the yeah. chat room's going to castigate me and say, oh, you're just a one percenter. But I look at it and. And I do feel techno lust. I, that yeah. thing looked. Now I, you actually touched it. Hashtag Mac lust. Remember Phil? Schiller? Yeah, he even <laughs> said that. And I, you know what? When he said it, I was kind of. I agree. That's, that's very dignified. Don't, don't 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 let Jimmy Fallon do Jimmy Fallon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We'll decide no. who the hashtags are. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's incredible, though. I mean, did, so it did, when you touched it. And, and held it. Did it feel great? Yeah, well, so I, I was able to take out my 11-inch MacBook Air, which I have here, and actually put it alongside the 12-inch. Uh, the, the fact that you and Jason both carry around 11 inches it means that you're the natural audience for this. I mean, because you've chosen that laptop and made many sacrifices mm -hmm. because it's small and light. Yep. Absolutely, and I wouldn't go back. You know, I have an iMac at home, and that machine is great if I want to do any kind of high-powered video editing, but this machine is so eminently portable that, yeah. like, that's something that's a, a big concern for me and the 12 inch uh macbook makes this feel fat it makes it feel yeah. fat it makes it feel bulky um which is it's not that much thinner but it's just it's Wait a minute, the same you tell me it makes an 11 inch air feel yes. fat yeah, and bulky it does it, you look at the you look at the percentages of the the, the sh shrinking that they did in the in the thickest point yeah. and of the motherboard and it's like i didn't know you could get those kind of percentages off of an 11 inch air and they did it uh, so it's it's it kind of sixty. That's why I think there's the no board. there's no. I think that's why I think this is the end of the air market. How do you even sell something called air if it's heavier? Well, it's just gonna fade. I think it'll fade away gradually. I think you're gonna have the MacBook the low, in the, it's the low, It's the low price MacBook. They still it's sell the yeah. optical low disc price. from the MacBook Pro for people who really want it. Like it takes a while to get. No, the Pro's not gonna go. I don't. I think the Pro will not go. Well, yeah, away. but they have a non-retina yeah, Pro. They have a non-retina yeah. Pro with oh, an optical. They still sell it. Yeah. No, I think you know who buys that schools. Well, it's and so I think because that's nine ninety nine or eight ninety nine something. Yeah. Until they can get. A MacBook down to eight ninety nine or nine ninety nine, the air will kick around. Oh, right my my big concern yeah. is the same one reason why. Like I love this computer. I don't have it because I like vertical pixel height. And the Retina display on this means we're pixel doubling, and that gives you about effect of seven twenty of. Vertical yeah, so height. it's actually going to be a tighter fit yeah. than the eleven inch air, but Retina. Yeah. Um, unless you put it in scaling you, mode. Yeah. yeah. And then you can see how fast that. Right. Will the GPU be fast enough to handle the three and a half megapixel screen? That's a lot of dots. So they I said that. Yeah, I think um, it will be able to handle the Retina screen to a certain extent. Did you guys do the work, work uh, the um, sliding around uh, workspaces and all yes, that? Yes. So I because that's what really challenging on the old one. Spaces, the first one. spaces. There was no lag. Spaces, I like yeah. It. Spaces. There was no lag. Uh, con what was this? Mission control. There's no lag. Just, uh, quickly scrolling through web pages, yeah. throwing out so that uh, you could see you know everything in spaces. It's quickly scrolling. So these MacBooks were running um, 1102. They're not. They don't have photos for Mac. So we were oh, actually running through iPhoto, yeah. which as anyone who's used iPhoto knows, there it's are a pig. there's lots. Of, yeah, there's lots of memory leaks there, and there are about 4,000 photos in there. No problem. Again. This is a machine that, for basic tasks, I think will be fine. Um, I would not, I would not bring a 12-inch MacBook to an Apple event to live blog it. I would not run Aperture on a 12-inch MacBook. I would not run Final Cut on a 12-inch MacBook. I think that for now, I would keep my 11-inch MacBook Air for those kinds of travel tasks. Uh, if I was just using it for writing and uh, web browsing and quick travel, quick and light travel. Absolutely, I would get a 12-inch MacBook. If I needed anything super hardcore, it would be a MacBook Pro. That's kind of my. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. And I think and one of the, the, as you, as I think Jason pointed out, the chat room is the exact wrong audience for this because even <laughs> we love them. They've but. got eight th things going on, <laughs> yeah. and they got th five screens. And uh, I think a big audience for this, and I think you speculated this, Andy, before the announcement, is the audience that has a Pro Mac of some kind, whether it's a 5K iMac or a Mac Pro, and wants a portable kind of uh, device that they that you could take to the Boston Public Library and, and things like that. Does this fill yeah. the bill? A a exactly true. I mean, th there are expectations that are absolutely appropriate for the hardware they've put into it and the features that they've put into it. That's why, uh, as, as much as you've heard me complain about 
uh, certain hardware decisions over the over the past, I'm perfectly fine with all this. Th that's exactly the sort of thing people want. It also creates, I would say, uh, more than that, a little bit of a problem for the iPad because it puts more pressure on Apple to produce a more professional 9.7-inch uh, iPad or a larger iPad because a lot of the people, myself included, were buying and traveling with iPads ch alongside having a really good desktop Mac and a really good notebook because I do not need to bring the entire Ringling Brothers Three Ring Circus with me to the coffee shop or even for a, a weekend uh, trip someplace. I just want a screen, a keyboard, and enough basic apps and functionality that I can just keep on top of the work that I need to do. So this is a really, really big thing. I, I it's It's hard to... Uh, uh, look at some of the hardware in my office, though, and not realize that, you know what? I, I, a lot when I, when I look at the things that I like about the Mac, the, this new MacBook, they are also the things I like about the two hundred and forty nine dollars Samsung Chromebook that I bought <laughs> last year because it's super tiny. It doesn't have everything I need, but it has enough that I need, uh, and it, for the stuff that I trust it to do, it works perfectly fine. And for the people in the chat room who are like, oh, well, this isn't, a, you know, a $1,300 computer. This is a $1,000 computer or a $900 computer. And I would say <laughs> if you were just talking about internals, yes, it's when you incorporate the retina display. It's made of gold. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's made of gold. gold. Karen, no, um, no the, the retina display is the big, is the big the price expense. point. Well, I mean, again, you look at you look at comparability here and you look at the 13-inch yeah. MacBook Pro. Um, and what the MacBook Pro has in, and it's it's the it's the Retina display and it's the thinness. I'm it's, excited. It's 277 yeah. DPI mm -hmm. is nice. It's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, we could see we could see the picture crystal clear, yeah. perfectly from our seats halfway back in the auditorium when Tim brought it out on stage and was just mm. like, "Look at this! Oh, I'm gonna laugh and like jump and up it's on my foot." It's um, I don't. <laughs> no, it's yeah, not glossy. No, it's it's edge-to-edge edge glass, but it's yeah. not yeah. the glossy mm. kind. Okay, so that's good. Yeah. And, and, and and for comparison, I mean, we always go back to print. Uh, you know, two hundred and twenty-five DPI was was not bad. No, you know, for you know, for a magazine. When the laser writer uh, came out at three hundred DPI. It was like, oh, <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So this is close to that. I mean, I, it's and, so and it's at arm's length. You're not going to see a, a dot on a two hundred seventy-seven DPI screen. I certainly noticed length. the difference in the Apple logo on the back. They've gotten the screen so thin now. Oh That's yeah, right. Uh, the the Does Apple logo. Up? The Apple logo is mirrored like the right. iPad and not light up like previous laptops because there is physically no room to put the electronics for light up. That laptops. makes sense. Yeah. I thought it's just like a hole where the backlight comes through. That's not it. I, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that I all that is? It's just, yeah. I'm fixing a hole. But yeah. I, I, even if I love even the if shiny one. And when it's gold, <laughs> golly. That's, you know what? The gold is not terrible. So do you have to match I want the question. gold. Do you have to get the gold phone, the gold watch, the gold phone, the gold iPad, <laughs> yes. and the gold Mac? Or yes. can you switch I them up? It has opulence. <laughs> can you switch them up? You know, I really, uh, so I really don't like lots of gold, but the gold laptop is nice, but the space gray. The space gray reminds me of like the old yes. power books, oh, right? Should, it has that, that beautiful, one? it has that beautiful cold I'm gray color. My design <laughs> yeah. No. Space gray yeah, or gold? Space yeah. gray looked really good. Mm. The gold, I, I was worried. I got the gold iPad Air just because I wanted to, to photographically show that it was new because, you know, all the other ones had been black or, mm -hmm. or silver. Mm -hmm. And with this, you have that same urge because it, it's obvious that it's a new MacBook. But then I saw the space gray and it's just really lovely. It's made of carbonite, right? That's what space gray is, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. It's very science fiction-y. <laughs> It Carbon, feels like, yeah. yeah, it feels like, no, it feels like uh, Han Solo should be. They said that for the watch, though. They said we have the stainless steel watch, and we put a special carbon finish yeah, on it. Yeah, that's no, no, the it space wasn't, black. It, yeah. it, was, yes. it wasn't carbon. They were little, like, uh, they were like selenium buds or something that they put on there to give it a texture, right? Well, how do you ask them for the polish, but six. to make the, the stainless steel one into black, they used some kind oh, of carbon, to carbon coating yeah. to make the space black, yeah. Like you could just hear, you know, them laughing. So space gray. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I think space gray too. Space gray. Space gray. I'm, a I'm space going gray old, guy. so I don't look like you guys. <laughs> yeah. you boring Smart old move. people. Mm -hmm. Smart I wanna, move. You're gonna match Andy's hat. <laughs> I want to yes. look like an Eastern European plutocrat. <laughs> <laughs> all these boots. I'm yeah. I'm really once expecting he, Andy once to get, you get the, gold the one Swarovski yeah. crystals glued onto that son of a bun. <laughs> I can oh, has boy, bling. You're a class coming out your Gosh. butt. Is that called McDazzled? Is that a McDazzler? Let's <laughs> <laughs> not even talk about whatever anodization firms are gonna do. To I want to bedazzle it. All right. Anything else to say before we uh, move on? Because there's other things to talk about. But uh, I, I, I wanted to lead with the MacBook because I thought this is classic Apple where they put a flag in the sand way beyond what anybody else is doing and saying, look, this is where computing is going. And I think this, this time they nailed it. It was interesting to me because we did a thing where we did quick interviews with people during the event. And I spoke to Ben Beher and Ben Thompson and uh, Horace Dedia. And they all led with the Mac. That was the exciting thing for yeah. them. And, what did Horace say? Uh, I'll, I'll have the video, we have the video yeah. more right now, but it, it, it was just like 
the ability for them to, tr to look at this market where it's been declining for so many quarters and the Mac is growing, and they're not just happy with that. They're doubling down on what they think they can go with it. And Ben Beharin thinks they can get to 20% in, in five or It's really interesting, 20% market share yeah. for OS X. It's interesting because they've done so well with mobile. Yeah. I mean, that's now the business of Apple is mobile, and the rest of it is kind of like I remember a Steve Jobs line. came out and said, if you count MacBooks, we're the biggest mobile company. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and they sort, of think, they sort of think they sort of think about MacBooks now as this being This new part MacBook of their mobile. is a mobile yeah. device, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, I think it, the... It, oh, go ahead. It's an Amtrak device. It's, it, it, it's, it's, also a, it's also a great statement about a policy that Apple, a, a, a core philosophy of design that Apple's been uh, following for uh, at least since the iPhone, that they really want to say that it doesn't, you, you've got, you've got the new MacBook, you've got a watch, you've got an iPad, you've got an iPhone. It really is all the exact same experience. Only the device you have most handy to you is going to be a different, it, it just a, a, a nearby articulation of it. The fact that they're going to take the same haptic responses that you have in the watch and put this into this trackpad, they're going to be in other devices is just part of that. The fact that they really have, I, I, I'm not, I don't know why, uh, what, what, if, if they could have made the uh, Apple logo illuminated on the back of it. But uh, my, my idea of this is that once they saw that, okay, we've got a problem, this is so thin we can't possibly illuminate the logo, I believe that they didn't even consider solving that problem because, nope, we already got a great design, a mirrored logo that's already on the iPad Air. This is beautiful. This is perfect. Exactly right. We'll, we'll make the most iPad-like MacBook ever, and it's going to really bring home the idea that we are selling you a constellation of hardware that will all work together to improve your life, hopefully. Yeah, I really don't think, you know, this MacBook is a is a flag in the sand in terms of this is where we're going. This is where we think the future of MacBook computing is going to be. We're putting in force touch. We're getting rid of fans in laptops. Love it. Yeah. Like, we're doing a bunch of these really innovative things. Is this laptop going to be perfect for everybody? Not by a long shot. Like, if you don't, if this isn't perfect for your work case, if you don't want to pay $12.99 for Fine. a laptop, they give you don't. choices. I'm going to stick with my 11 inch probably yeah. for another year. Like, I really like the 12, but it's not quite right for me. Will it be right in a year or two? Quite possibly. Do I love the fact that Apple is actually making these adjustments ahead of time and saying, like, oh, we're not going to wait until we have the entire line, you know, polished and slim lined and all of that. We're just, we're going to go with it. We're going to go line by line by line, and we're going to polish this up. Same way we did with Retina, same way did we did with taking out optical drives. It's just, it's how they roll. They go incrementally, and it's that's okay. <laughs> I think what's so interesting, too, is this acknowledgement that we are basically in a wireless world now, and mm -hmm. that all your data is wireless. Okay, but that, that, let, let's, let's point out the one big, the, the one comment that was made by anybody on that stage that made me think, maybe actually say during the live cast, no, you're wrong about that, <laughs> is when Phil saying, let's face it, the, uh, the, the best notebook is, is naturally going to be wireless. I say, like, yeah, and also the best salary for a public school teacher is going to be a quarter million dollars. <laughs> that doesn't, okay, that doesn't, that doesn't mean it's actually happening, Phil. It's I'll like point a, out you, that you need to have wires in places. Five years ago, when they did the first MacBook Air, they made the exact same claim. They said it didn't have the a CD same ROM. thing. It, well, and it had one USB port. And they said, right. oh, but it's wirelessly. You're just yeah. going to want to do it wirelessly. Right. Yeah, and then wireless CD they technology. added back yeah. in some ports. I remember and... a lot of people upset about <laughs> Ethernet uh, disappearing. And that, as, as you said, Alex, you kind of get over that. Um, no, I, I haven't. I haven't. Except yet. for Alex. Yeah. <laughs> Alex yeah. is the one who hasn't. <laughs> I miss the Ethernet. I was like, where is that dongle? But I bought a dongle, but I never use it. I Ethernet mean, was a constraint to making it thinner. Like, you have to start getting rid of yeah. ports. And so, frankly, with I have Thunderbolt to, I have, and the 3 So was a MagSafe adapter for crying out loud. You know, I think that Apple not doing a proprietary power cable is is a revolutionary step for Apple. That should be the headline. That's a headline. I, I have a I have I have a Pavlovian response when I hear both of those things say that they had they made it thinner. They didn't have to make it thinner because the MacBook Pro is not that much too thin to have to accept a standard Ethernet connector. And also the MagSafe, the mini MagSafe uh, connector is the worst component <laughs> design Apple has come up with in ten years. It is crap. It is borderline defective. What's wrong? And there with is it? no way to just it pops off if there is a mouse. Trespassing in the backyard, and he twitches his ears. Pop goes uh, goes uh, goes my MagSafe connector. I've, I I adjust it like I adjust it like this, and the boom. And now the, the MagSafe connector has just come off. I, I put it down on my sofa. It comes off. I base I try to close the. I close the it just I'm, keeps. I miss the elbow joint. It's not something that it's supposed unit. to do. Uh, so I would, I, I, would, I, would ha I would happily pop, take another bag. Yeah. I, <laughs> show title. I like it, Andy. I I, I a, agree with you. It's way too it's way too quick to pop off. But also having an 11 inch air. If I had a power cable that actually connected to that, and I was working on the the house, 
this MacBook would go Wait flying. Minute, yours popped off. It's, yeah. I don't well, know. no, I'm well, saying well, like if it, if it wasn't right MagSafe, yeah. There's a reason. If it wasn't reason, MagSafe, uh, this thing would go well, flying. Well, that wasn't at the selling there's point a, of MagSafe. Yeah. Steve said, oh, you're going to trip over. You don't have to worry about tripping anymore. So my, my thought Worry. with when I first heard, I was like, oh, you're changing the cable. If the battery life is long enough to warrant the Mac only being plugged in at the end of the day, that's my point. then there's not a problem. Right. Nine hours of battery life, I'm still thinking that's not quite ready. But like if we start getting up to 14, 18, 20, like that's, that's I, I think nine is plenty that's, for that's me. Part, that's, the problem, that's the problem we were talking about earlier that I'm glad that people who, have, who want MacBook Airs have that kind of connector that is thin enough to allow the MacBook Air to be thinner and allow this lighter weight thing not to cut, fall off. I chose not to have a MacBook Air because I don't want one, but I have to suffer every single time I'm, I'm attached to power because of this stupid design that should not have ever left Cupertino. I think, it's I think Jason Snell is right. He observed in the chat room that it's socialism. <laughs> yes. And we must, we must stamp it <laughs> yes, out. I, the chat room is, is it's the decided. Obama it's all, Mac. It's all like communism <clears throat> now. We're going to take a break and <laughs> come back What's with What's wrong with socialism? That's the Canadian. <laughs> says the Canadian. Uh, oh, how do you like your national health care? Is it working for you? It's great. I can get as sick as I want to my house. <laughs> oh, no. That, 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 that's going too far. <laughs> what a great panel. I think we should just uh, bring out some uh, whiskey and, and celebrate. Uh, a wonderful group here uh, from Canada. Mr. Rene Ritchie, iMore. And the Mobile Nations crew has done a bunch of videos and stuff. Is that at iMore.com? Yes, or? absolutely. Okay. Also from iMore, Serenity Caldwell. Alex Lindsay, not from iMore, Montreal. He's from... Rwanda. The for, the, man, for the moment, for this week. The for man week. from Rwanda. <laughs> also here, uh, Andy Anako from the Chicago Sun-Times. What a great crew. I'm just loving this. Jason Snell from SixColors.com. We're all sad about uh, Ohm. Giga Ohm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We should, I'm just going to mention that briefly before we go into the ad. But uh, Giga Ohm, which was one of the great tech publications started by Ohm Malik. Ohm had left it about a year ago yeah. to become a VC although he's still doing his uh, uh, newsletter and stuff, um, they had taken a significant amount of venture funding. Eight million. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if that's related to it, but for some reason, something happened yesterday on the uh, GigaOM site. They posted, we run out of money. We owe money to our creditors. Uh, they now own the assets. Bye-bye. And they were at the event with us yesterday. Yeah. yeah. I saw Kevin Toffel, yeah. which is, the I think, the last post on GigaOM was his uh, review of the Apple Watch. And... It's just, it's funny because um, today is the six months to the day that all the, the Mac, all the Mac yeah. happened yeah. six and, months ago today. Yeah. And so uh, Giggle happening six months directly after that is, it's, I don't know. So a bunch of people yeah. saying no more Apple events. Apple events. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stay away from Apple events. That's why I haven't gone for years. Uh, <laughs> no, it's very really sad. And I love yeah. Om Malik. I don't think this affects particularly Om Malik, uh, but it does affect some of our great friends like Matthew Ingram and Kevin Toffel, uh, Stacey Higginbottom, uh, a bunch of great people work yeah. there, Yanko mm -hmm. Rickers. Uh, and I hope they all find work. And uh, if you haven't, call me. Or, you know what? Just call Renee. He's got so much more money than I do. <laughs> Our show today brought to you by LegalZoom. It's a National Start Your Own Business Month. That's something. Maybe just start your own business. You guys are good enough. At, at LegalZoom.com, you have the, the wherewithal to create the business you've always dreamed of. Now, LegalZoom's not a law firm, but let me tell you, when I started Twit 10 years ago... Uh, Kevin Rose said, you ought to be an LLC. Don't just be a company. Protect yourself. $99, I think it was. Now it's a little more, but that's 10 years later. It's $150. That's the starting point to create an LLC. You can also do a Chapter S or C Corp. LegalZoom really gives you the power to do what you need to do. Trademarks did that too. Uh, patents, if you need them. There's a lot of stuff there. LegalZoom.com. If you use the offer code MBW, by the way, you can take, take 10 bucks off at the checkout. Now would be a good time to start your own business. And as I said, LegalZoom is not a law firm. If you need some legal advice, they have built a network of trusted attorneys to provide the guidance you need for your specific situation. That's really great because, uh, uh, you know, things come up, little questions, but you don't want to spend $350 or $450 an hour. You don't have to. These are pre-negotiated flat rates with attorneys in almost every state. You can look at uh, their profiles online and unedited customer reviews to get an idea of what they can do for you. And here's the best part. During National Start Your Business Month, LegalZoom is offering an attorney consultation for 50 smackers. $50. Yeah, that's a really great deal. If you're unsure about the best way uh, to start your own business or if you've already run a business and you need some advice, 
trust me, that is a great deal. I would have called him immediately and said, okay, I'm, should I start it? I started in Delaware. Somebody said, somebody, just somebody, probably on Twitter said, <laughs> oh, no, be in Delaware. Actually, there was no Twitter at the time, but uh, somewhere like that. And uh, it would be nice to ask a, a lawyer, California, Delaware, what, you know, what's the, what's the difference? Go to LegalZoom.com today. You can find that out and more. Attorney consultations are provided by independent attorneys available in most states. You can get the legal help you need for your business at LegalZoom.com. And, of course, all the forms, everything you need to do at your own direction. It is really great. It is, it is really like having your own law firm, except they're not. LegalZoom.com. And, and they don't charge the same prices either. Get $10 off when you use the offer code MBW. And don't forget that $50 consultation for this month only, National Start Your Business Month. What a team of people. When we booked this, Jason Howell said, we've never had six people on <laughs> on any show before. <clears throat> At least not, a, not as I've been producing. It's possible that this oh, might have. rival. I'm sure we've had six we on have. before. Uh, usually, uh, when we've gone out in the field, like at uh, Apple stores and stuff, we've had this many. Yeah. But uh, we don't have our camera barely I can get. I wasn't Andy sure if the wide in. camera was going to be able to fit it. I was like, I don't know if we can do any more, Leo. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, this is the limit, though. We can't do seven unless yeah. they sit in my lap. Um, anyway, great to have you all. Thank you for coming up, making the making the trip, or coming in on uh, Skype. Uh, before we get to the watch, let's just briefly mention a couple of the other things that were announced yesterday. They led with the Apple TV and HBO Now. Mm -hmm. And somebody on Twitter pointed out that H-B-O-N-O-W has Bono in the name. So Bono... <laughs> No, just uh, Tim Cook trolling the audience <laughs> one step at a time. Uh, Sixty nine dollars for the Apple TV. I think it was you, Andy, who said this is a sign that they're that they're not getting traction. Um, it's certainly. I mean, this is this is the conversation that you have with your kids, saying, "Son, I'm I'm not angry with you. I'm just disappointed with you." And that's when Apple drops the price on anything. It means it's just not. It's getting really good competition from someplace else, and they're starting to feel the pain. It's not possible uh, that maybe they're clearing it out to do a new Apple TV. I suppose it's possible, uh, but they have easy. I, I, I feel like they'd have easier ways to get rid of it than to do a simple price reduction. That would that, that would indicate they've got so much stock on hand uh, that they need to start clearing things out, and that doesn't sound like something that Apple yeah. generally uh, does. I don't think it's a clear out sale. I think that the, this product is so old and the hardware is so mm -hmm. old that the margins on it have to be so great at this right. point that they can afford to cut it. And if there's a new Apple TV, they're probably not going to be able to price it at 69. So, um, you know, I'm hopeful that this means there is a new Apple TV that is on more modern hardware with perhaps some revised software that we'll see sometime this year. But that one's not going to be able to go out there for 69. And they've got this HBO deal. So right. the old hardware they can sell cheaper. I, yeah, I don't think it's necessarily a closeout sale so much as it is that they've got room to, to cut the price and still make money. Yeah, yeah. they got to give people reason I, to buy it. Yeah, well, and I think I think that the, that you want to. I think we may see start to see more and more rumors about Apple TV as we get closer to something like WWDC. I think there's a real opportunity there for them to open up the architecture a little bit, uh, which I say every year when WWDC comes out. I say the same thing. So there's there's an open opportunity for them to create games and so on and so forth that are run from your iPhone or or other things um, that they haven't really you know utilized. I also think that there is. It'll be really interesting to see how HBO, CBS, Netflix, Amazon, you know, start moving towards these kind of you know, these boxes. You know, and, and whether when we see 4K, for instance, this is going to be the first place that's going to be easy to distribute on the box in, in mass consumption. And I think that it would be crazy to see another Apple TV that wasn't 4K coming out, you know, in, the, in this year. So I think it'll be interesting to see whether this price drop represents, you know, this is 1080p and the next one. I, I think there's 50-50, maybe 60-40 chance that we'll see a 4K um box you know in june where you give the developers enough time especially if they open it up a little bit to, to have some fun with it yeah i can't imagine i can't imagine hbo being like yes we're going to we're going to sign an exclusive at least for a couple months deal with apple um because you know a, as they have no new hardware being like well and, yeah, and if you look at what th there's three months there's three months and mm -hmm. three months ends right when wwdc starts yeah. So, you know, the, there's an exclude, you know, um, you know, of, you know, in that process. And so, uh, you know, I think that um, there could, you know, again, 4K is interesting because it, it allows them to, allows people who are unboxing their, unbundling their, their service to 
basically upsell a lot of people away from cable because it's the only place you can get it. Everyone's buying 4K, you know, because now you can go to Walmart and buy a 4K monitor for $800 or $700. And so that's become the next thing, but no one has any content for it. And I think that the first place to do this is the unbundled, you know, um, services. The other thing that's interesting is like, if you just look at the products that they're working on, if there is another Apple TV and they're making it dependent on content deals and those content deals aren't signed, but they have an HBO deal that is signed, they want to get ahead of that. That probably didn't come really cheap to get an exclusive on HBO for several months. So getting as many Apple TVs into people's hands as possible is a good thing, at least for now. And also, um, Apple can build stuff. Like they, they might announce a new box at WWDC that is 4K compliant, but they might not have 4K iTunes by then. So because of broadband, because of getting the content, remastering and all those things, but it'll be compatible when it's compatible. And I think that's the most interesting thing when you start putting uh, like a Cyclone chip in it, you start putting metal in it, you start having a game store or an app store on it. It's, Apple was very, Tim Cook said this is the beginning when he announced that Apple TV. And I think that's the interesting thing. Would they ever license it for TV manufacturers? That's a big thing now, smart TVs, and they're all crappy. I'd love it's to see a good Apple question. TV I mean, you look what Apple's doing with CarPlay. It's right. I mean, it would be just it's, like that, wouldn't it? Yeah, I, I don't necessarily think that will happen, but I can't entirely rule it out because of what they're currently I doing. I think with that CarPlay. may end up being the way to get into people's hands. Mm. But they don't like CarPlay is not like, like CarPlay. They still own the technology. It's just being broadcast right. onto the screen, and mm -hmm. I think that's already AirPlay. Right. They have the, they all, like the box is their control I think, point mechanism. I, I, I would sooner, I don't know whether either will happen, but I would sooner expect to see Air, uh, an, an Apple TV built into a, a TV that Apple sells, a monitor that Apple sells than before, before they would, I think they'd sell their own monitor before they'd sell it as a, as an add on to Sony's TVs or yeah. Samsung's. I could only really see it as a, as a booster from the iPhone a la CarPlay where it's, you know, the majority of the software hook-ins are there and maybe, maybe televisions support the AirPlay Apple TV standard. Direct. Yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, LG bought WebOS to put that into their smart TVs. I, I've tried Samsung. I've tried LG. I've tried. They're, they're all, all terrible. Crappy. They're all awful. Vizio is arguably the best among, but the, among terrible. Yeah. Um, and I think if somebody came along and said, now with Apple TV, Samsung, now with Apple TV, that might be but, a great way to get but, into people's, uh, I, yeah. you know. So but are we the right people to talk about this? I mean, they're people who... Uh, they, they see the Netflix logo on their Samsung smart TV and say, well, I, it'll, it's going to be a nightmare for 20 minutes to set it up. But once it's set up, it's going to actually work. Right. Um, meanwhile, they, they're, they're more averse to having to plug in another box and put in another power strip uh, behind that, that, that desk or that, uh, that sofa table than anything else, I think. It also could be that what an Apple TV changes to become just a small HDMI thing you plug in and all the logic stays on your phone instead of being a separate box. I, I've talked we, at CES, uh, we interviewed a bunch of the telephone manufacturers and their interest in having a good tele, uh, user experience is negligible. <laughs> They're like, <laughs> they we're, we're putting Tizen on our phone, on our computers because that's, that's the it's future. Cheap. When you walk in with your Tizen watch and your Tizen yeah. phone, it creates a great Tizen experience. No, that cheap is boot. what they want. They, yeah. they, they, and they want it to be their stack and they traditionally yeah. have no strength in software programming. Um, I am thrilled though at HBO uh, now and uh, Maybe I shouldn't be because it turns out it's a push for a cord cutter. It's the same price as if you got HBO from your cable company. Although I think it's, you can light, you can register three devices at the same. Or you can have three devices running at the same time. Yeah, so you could put it on your iPad, your iPhone, and your Mac, yeah. your Apple TV. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, and it's, so this is for those who don't know, for fifteen dollars a month, over the top HBO. So you don't have to have a cable subscription. Uh, you could just get HBO. For that price, and I think that's it's pretty pre good. Like they're, they're marketing it as a premium service. They're, they don't want a discount. They don't want to race to the bottom. Right. They want to think that HBO content is valuable, and you're paying for that. Well, and also, you know, fifteen dollars a month maybe what you're paying to your cable company for HBO. But you think about like as somebody who tries their hardest to not pay for cable television. You're a cord cutter, well, I would yeah, guess. I'm, yeah, I'm largely the. I I currently have basic cable subscription because I tried to get rid of it, and they gave me HBO for free. Right. And at the time, I was like, well, all you really want was Game of yeah, Thrones. Yeah, exactly. I know. <laughs> Game of Thrones, and newsroom, and all of those things. I'm yeah. like, yeah, I'm finishing watching The Wire. Uh, but you know, for people who never want to subscribe to cable and their internet is maybe only forty bucks a month. That now is fifty-five dollars a month for HBO and right. their internet, rather than well, and, eighty-five ninety for cable. And the other thing to remember is, is that HBO is one of the most expensive, uh, you know, channels on there. So while while it might be fifteen dollars a sub, you know, as as you know, many of these uh, you know cable networks are one dollar or two dollars or four dollars. And so if other ones start to peel off, if this starts to be successful, well, it really becomes complicated. It could be cable. the crack. It could be the crack in the ice, couldn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, but CBS also- is a bigger crack than, than, than HBO, uh, bigger cracks with the other networks, you know, right. and then discovery channel. I mean, discovery channel breaks away and that's really where bad things start to happen. Well, There's ESPN so is already broken away. Cause if you, uh, subscri- you know, pay for the, uh, um, what do they call it now? I've forgotten the name and they are a sponsor too. I'm so sorry. You know, the $20 a month slim. Slim, Thank you. Slimbox TV. (laughs) Okay. I'm getting old. (laughs) Slimbox TV. TV. uh, You get ESPN and that is the most, that actually is the most expensive cable channel. It's rumored that the cable companies pay $16 a month per subscriber to uh, ESPN. I, I think I think and, a big problem that HBO wants to get ahead of, though, is that it's not just people saying, you know what, I shall rise up against the hegemony of cable television and I shall cut the cable. It's that you're getting generations of people that don't even don't think even, of television yeah. in, the term, in the terms of a cable subscription. They think in terms of Hulu and Netflix yeah. and just paying for a digital subscription to what you want. So I, if, if, if that's money they're going to be leaving on the table in, a, in five years if they don't have this fully uh, spun up by then. I actually thought... So, uh, uh, Serenity would be because she's just because she's young, but also I thought you might not have cable because you live in a metro and you can put an antenna. Yeah, up well, apartment. I'm in an apartment, yeah. um, and unfortunately, the digital <clears throat> excuse me, the digital antennas are a lot uh, a lot sketchier and not not as reliable right. as uh, your traditional you know pre right. say what you want for the digital switchover, but it actually it becomes much harder. If I if it wasn't a I got a, like I wanted HBO, and if it wasn't a like I you know I can get HBO on the side, I wouldn't have gone for cable. And uh, the only reason I have cable right now is because of HBO, and because my cable company was basically like, we'll allow you to pay the exact same money that you would for your That's super really, high broadband, yeah. mm-hmm. but okay. we'll also throw in basic cable and HBO. Okay. And I'm like, all right, well. But you gonna, know that's going to run out. Oh sure, and then when that does, I'll probably cancel and I'll go to a to a different competitor mm-hmm. that has better internet and no no cable. And I'll be fine with that. Do we get, did they say when that, am I going to get, like, am I going to get an Apple TV update now and HBO Now will be on there? Or? Well, Apple TV updates over the air. They don't have to push new It just software. happens. Yeah, they update the firmware, but they can also add channels. It's basically like a web page and they can and add they said a new a- Sometime in April because yeah, that's when s- Game of Thrones. Yeah. You can start subscribing now. Um, and if you subscribe uh, before, I think, what, April? Yeah, it's like. Fifth or something, yeah. yeah. If you describe, if you if you subscribe before the beginning of April, you will be able to get the first month free, oh, so that you can all enjoy right. all of the fun Game of Thrones content. And somebody asked, and I think that uh, we can answer this: that what's the difference in HBO Go and HBO Now? And I think they'll probably be exactly the same, except one will be over the top, and one will require a yeah. cable subscription. Yes, I don't imagine they'll create a new app for that. Well, for HBO Go, you need a login anyway yeah. that you yeah. create by like once you log your, in, yeah. it's done. You don't log in every time; you're done. Yeah. Correct. And then uh, you get everything just as you will with HBO now. You get all past shows. You get all current shows. Mm -hmm. He said all future shows, but I don't see how that could happen. It's to the end of time, all future shows (laughs) ever. I don't know how they're going to. While you subscribe. That would be impressive. Yeah. I think this is also using that technology. They stopped doing their own license, their own technology for the streaming. Use MLB Network. (laughs) Network. Okay. Uh, All right. Watch. Let's talk the watch. Good old watch. Are you putting your watch away now? No. You don't want us to know you have one, Ray? No. Wait. I'm Where's it? Well, everybody. We, yeah. we went to cook it out in a, uh, what is that, a pebble? It's a pebble. <laughs> Somebody pointed out the new pebble that they're kickstartering and they've raised $17 million for looks exa- almost exactly like the Apple Watch. Yeah, interesting, isn't it? In a it? certain light. Uh, we, we did, did we learn anything about the Apple Watch that we didn't know? I, I don't think they said yeah. before that it, you could talk on the phone. We knew yeah, that. Well, we, did we, we know did, that? but yeah. it wasn't. So I think the, the watch word in terms, uh, ha ha, uh, for the Apple Watch <laughs> event is specifically that um, it we, we saw more of what it could do. You know, in September, yeah. we saw a very tightly controlled demonstration. We, you guys got a slideshow. Yeah, pretty this much. This time mm. you actually got to use it. Yeah, yeah. We, got a, we got a complete free for all. I was able to try a couple different watches, including the edition. And I was able to, you know, Ooh. they tried to guide us through, but there was Ooh. very much like a, all right, I'm just going to go into settings. Yeah. Let's see what kind of settings are on the watch. <laughs> so because, it's stable. And it's really oh, yeah. Works. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm glad that it's going to have another month because there are definitely like little bugs here and there, but it's nothing that I'm not, that I'm worried that Apple won't be able to fix. It's just like a little bit of stroke. So, so yeah. the big revelation then was uh, date, pre order mm-hmm. April 10th, yeah. deliver April 24th, and price anywhere from 349 which we already knew, up to $17,000. Yes. Mm. I was, you know, and if you dig into the price, some of the things are strange. For instance, the uh, Rose Gold Edition 
with a rubber, I'm sorry, floral last <laughs> band. Elastomer. Yeah, Christy Turlington said rubber band on stage. I know, Christy. Yeah. No, no, Didn't you get the briefing? Elastomer. It's a floral elastomer brand. Anyone see your the supermodel, sir? I'm bound by no earthly king. <laughs> <laughs> so that one, uh, the least expensive uh, edition, is 10000 mm -hmm. All you have to do is put a leather band on, and then it goes up 7000 Is that a $7,000 yeah. band? Well, it's not quite the band, because the band also has a, an 18-karat gold Buckle. clasp and yeah. an 18-karat gold side clasp as well. So you're talking about a fair amount of extra gold. I think it's still ridiculous. Seven thousand. Yeah. That's seven. Leo, I at know. that price point, there is no connection between. It's, it's, well, again, that's what was clear. It's, it's like bizarre. If it's you like, buy a Lamborghini, you do not care what the price of gas is. For instance, it's fifty bucks more to get a thirty-eight, uh, forty-two millimeter than a thirty-eight yes. in the sport model. Mm -hmm. In the gold model, it's two thousand dollars. Because more. the price is irrelevant. You're not buying. Like, it's no, not about no price. one buying that watch is going to no. miss that. They, they'll buy seven of them. Yeah. and they're not going to miss the money. You buy it to demonstrate your ability to earn, so that they you were can very careful. Get a girlfriend. Well, no. So like they were very, when they announced it, they didn't say these are the three models. They said the, the gold is a limited edition. It's going to be available at select, select retailers. Stores, yes. And is it not Apple Store? We, like they just had select stores. They select were very non-specific. Yeah. So, so Tiffany well, and Nordstrom. Well, I, I asked. I asked a follow-up, and they did say select Apple stores. Okay. Ah, okay. But still, you're talking about probably the flagship stores in Boston, New York, Los Angeles, maybe Paris. You know, uh, people, places that we associate traditionally ah. with high-end fashion, celebrities, that yeah. kind of a thing. But not Neiman Marcus, well, no, it's, Andy, it's, or yeah. Apple stores plus other retail. Uh, I I only asked for clarification on whether it was going to be available in actual Apple retail stores, and they confirmed okay. that yes, certain select Apple stores okay. will have the gold watches. But it's like the, the important thing is it's not it's not like these aren't three ranges of watches, and you just choose which one you want. There are people who only want to buy a gold watch, and they're right. interested in the Apple watch. And yes, we'll make one like we make again. They're like we make horologists. A yes. And mm -hmm. it, they want one, but they would only ever consider a gold watch, and it's Among not that things, hard for them. To you do. can lead a horologist to a watch, but you can't make them think or something. Oh. Yeah, there, there would be a good, that would be a good time, family yeah. family feud topic of names to describe people who are buying the seventeen thousand dollar Apple Watch. <laughs> so <laughs> number one answer. So the Did Apple they, Watch. It, now you guys yeah. are in the room, so we're watching on TV, and we and the price went by so fast. We thought he actually didn't say it. Did it seem like the ten thousand dollars? Oh no, he oh, it was it. not on a well, slide, I, and he sort of moved past it, and there were gasps in the room. <gasps> what? Yeah. Right, God forbid. Expect, you know, Gruber nailed it, right? Yeah. Yep. In mm -hmm. fact, you got to think Gruber had a little leak because he even <laughs> nailed the price difference for the 38 to 42 millimeter. Oh, uh, well, so he, well, he, wanted, he wanted 30, didn't he? He wanted a $30 I think up difference. Too with the, with yeah. The, uh, oh, no, I mean, okay. honestly, we've heard rumors for the last six, seven months, especially when you factor in cold, price of gold, blah, blah, blah. But uh, I think it comes down to Apple wants, as Renee was saying, Apple wants um, the people who would normally buy high end watches to be able to consider having an Apple watch on their wrist. Right. And in order to do that, they needed to make that tier. Is that tier designed for 99% of the population? No. Should you consider getting it if you are not in that 1% that it can afford it the way that we just afford iPhones every 18 months? No. Probably not. Yeah. Like the Apple Watch well, edition is designed for a very sub select group of people. It's not Apple saying we're not interested in anyone but luxury people anymore because clearly <laughs> the vast majority of Apple watches that they are going to make are going to be 349 to about $700, aka wow. that's about what most of their other, you know, smart products cost at this point. I and I think maybe this is the point of having a 10 to $17,000 watch. I was pleasantly surprised by the Mere eight hundred dollars a steal with a Milanese band would cost. Yeah, you're like, oh, that's oh that's wow, okay. that's a good deal, eight hundred dollars. Well, and I think it's interesting that I think it's interesting that Apple has somehow once again uh, gotten people to think, wow, only three hundred fifty dollars for a watch. I mean, yeah. you know, it's yeah. it took me a long time to think about a watch yeah. that cost that much, and now I'm not like, ah, oh, it's pretty inexpensive. That's not a problem. And, and I think that you know, for the edition, I, I think Lady Gaga wearing it, or or you know, someone like that. You know, the question is really how many of the aluminum versions does that sell? Yeah, well, and uh, good logic from the comments was bringing up, you know, uh, $10,000 watches, the majority, like the normal $10,000 Rolex, you can pass that on and wear it right. for 60 years, and this is probably gonna be 18 months. And I had that thought and that kind of complaint too. I'm like, but what about the people who wanna hand it down? And the answer is, this is not an heirloom watch. This right. is a watch for celebrities, models, etc. Right. These, This is the watch for people who upgrade their fashion accessories the right. way the majority of us upgrade their phones. There are people in, who are rich enough that a $17,000 watch is like $20 to you and me. Yep.
Right. And it's mm-hmm. like, oh, I'll take. And we heard I that during the event. There were people yeah. who were like, oh, like there were people who were much nice, better dressed than we were standing in the corner, going, oh, this feels like a fashion event. This I feel very much at home. Yeah. Oh, you saw people yeah. like that. Oh yeah, it I was know a it's fun hard. Game. It's hard to believe that there were people there dressed better than us. <laughs> <laughs> there oh, were a damn, few. This, this print media hand. They didn't tell me there'd be print media. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it was it was a very fun game at the beginning of the event, being like, all right, journalist. Engineer or fashion model? Mm. I think you can. You, the Christy oh, yeah. Turlington stand out a little. Yeah, bit. a little bit. Even the, even the reporters in the fashion industry were immaculate yeah. with like oh, special yeah. hair and colors. Yeah. And wow. It's, yeah, very, very <laughs> manicured. But I mean, going back to the original question, like how many normal, you know, how many uh, L, uh, sport and normal uh, Apple watches are they going to sell with this? Uh, I think having it in the media and having it so prominently in fashion magazines will encourage a certain amount of, you know, me too ness where it's like, oh, Lady Gaga's wearing a watch. I want to watch. It's no accident um, that Chinese Vogue and Vogue were the yep, first places right. to do layouts no with question. Apple watches. And the fact is, the watch is the same. The material is different, but the watch yep. is the same. And, and that, is, so that, that's, let's make that clear. Except for the sapphire crystal. Yeah, all the all of them are the same, right? There's no special version. It's just the there's no pro version. The software of the is the yeah. same. Software is the same. Yeah. The hardware inside the, the, the materials chip, the bands, vary. The all outside the bands will fit on That's, every casing regardless. Oh, okay, so, so yeah. bands are completely interchangeable. Long, like the 38s and the 42s will go with 38 and 42 cases, and you can swap. They so may not look great. If you're the smart, you'd buy the the plast fluoroelastomer edition, and then go down market and get a cheap. Buckle. Yeah, it's entirely. Po- I mean, It'd be silly to spend seven thousand. Those people will not do that, though. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. There are, not, there are people who want this. There's no coincidence no. that these these bands look like Mark Newsom's old watch bands. I mean, these are these are very particularly designed and like you read the the thing that Gruber linked to where he said it takes nine hours to make the link bracelet yeah. and then they mm-hmm. hand polish it. Yeah, we it mocked and, it. And, yeah, I mean that mm-hmm. that that is that is what I thought, Mark Newsom is designing. I for. thought I wanted the link bracelet, but then when I saw how inexpensive the Milanese was, I thought I like the Milanese. <laughs> the Milanese is actually really really nice. I did. So I was expecting that the Milanese was going to like pull on arm hair and like be really cold and uncomfortable. And I tried it right at the end before we were walking out. And I was pleasantly surprised. It fits really nicely. And it, it sizes feel... automatically because it's a magnet, It does. Right? It ma- it's yeah. a magnet, which also means that you can play with it and be like, do, 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 yeah. which is probably really bad for me. Uh, but I actually, Me too. I click yeah, things. Exactly. But the leather the leather band, the modern buckle, is the one that I was really interested in. And I, uh, after playing with the Milanese, I'm like, maybe I want a Milanese as the, as the like fancy non-running roller derby band that I use. What are you going to wear at roller derby? Are you gonna oh, wear I'm, I'm going to wear a sport. I'm going to wear a sport for the first two months. My my goal is to see how hard I can push it without breaking it, which I'm, I'm sure it made a lot of, when I was talking to Apple PR about this, they were like, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I'm, I I really am like the bands. The one thing I should say about the bands is that they all have different length sizes. Um, I was talking to a friend of ours who was like, I have a really thick wrist, and I actually don't know if the length of any of these bands will be big enough for me. And that's a that is a question. Um, and whether there's a or not sizing I'll, chart online. There is, yes. Not to <laughs> size, which bugs the hell out of me. My inner geek says, why don't you make this to size so that I could print it. And check my wrist. Yeah. Although in the Apple Store, app, they'll do that. There's a there's a thing where you can like put the a phone down on your wrist no. to properly size the 38 or the 42. That's <laughs> when you if you got 8.2, you got the new mm. watch app. The watch. Yeah, list. the watch. The uh, watch app. So there's a sizer in here. There's a size. I don't think it's in the watch app. I think oh. it's in the um Apple the Apple Store when you're oh, looking at like I'm gonna buy this size versus this size. What will availability be like? Should we get in line now? Well, so they're not going to take pre-orders for a little bit. April um, 10th. April 10th, yeah. correct. And the one, the the really cool thing that I was kind of hoping that they would do is that they are going to have try-ons basically available. Right. They're going to have the Apple stores are going to have watches All starting of them will have them. starting April 10th, and they have these beautiful yeah. tables that are like special unlocked by employee badges where you can go and make an appointment and try on whatever watch you want, and really decide ahead of time. Okay. This is the Apple Watch. So you're not blindly ordering online being like, oh, I don't know if the 38 or the 42 is too big for my wrist. You actually get the chance to go in to try everything on to figure out what's uh, what's best for you. Um, that said, how tightly demanded are in demand? <laughs> Would you help me take be? my yeah. phone off using <laughs> the silly thing you talked about been? last time? Yeah. So this is the Apple Store app. In here, there is, a, there is something that will let me pr- pick your favorite. I already picked my favorite model, by the way. <laughs> Oh, it's, uh, it's so easy. And there's a there's a great third-party site that someone put up called Mix Your Watch that allows you to kind of to match mix and, and match mix and bands. Match. Yeah, exactly. Where, where do I get the size? Um, I think you go to the Apple Watch page. I only saw a screenshot of it, so, okay. uh, so I'm, right. I'm right. designing learn you more. blind I'm here. I'm going to learn more. Let's, let's find View out pricing, together. View <laughs> pricing, shop, 
Let's yeah. shop. Let's shop for the Apple Watch. I want to shop. Apple Watch Sport. I want the edition. No, no, no. <laughs> you see how easy Are that is? Yes. Oh, this is going no. so You're easy. Like, what did I do? Accidentally spend ten. You thought it wasn't available yet. You pressed the wrong button. <laughs> That's I did that. I've done that. Let's let's put it that way. Yeah. Overview, maybe it's in the overview. All right. Well, we'll I'm, I'm, I don't want to yeah. waste everybody's we'll, time. We'll fiddle around and figure um, it out. But. If uh, uh, April 10th, could I order online, do you think? Or are you going to have to go to a store to do this? Oh, I think you can yeah. order online. You can already click around online now and pick which one you want. You right. just can't put it in your I hearted yeah. cart. I hearted it. Here you go. Same well, with the MacBook. I want, oh, actual size. Wow. Well, that's kind of cool. So now I can kind of see what that's going to look like. Do you think Serenity, having tried these on, uh, I'm looking at your wrists. Yeah, you have so normal wrists. My my wrists are pretty pretty tiny as as are wrist they? sizes. I mean, okay. I can you I can, can do that. Yeah, okay. in the in the camera here. My yeah. my wrists are pretty small. Um, Which but one would that you get? Said, I, I tried on both, and I think I slightly prefer the 38 millimeter. Okay. The 42 actually fit better on my wrist than I thought it would. It doesn't look that big. It's not that big. Tell you. No, it's really not. I mean, I tried on a Moto 360 before the September event, and it felt like it was. Basically dwarfing my the important wrist thing and making to remember, me look like I. So the the 360 actually, if you put them together, this is the yeah. 42 millimeter. So remember, the Leo, the uh, uh, Apple's, the same Apple's measuring yeah. the height yeah. when, the with the millimeters, not the width. Yeah. So the pro yeah the problem for the, three, for the yeah. 360 for me is Show that her. yeah when when I try and put clunky. it on the the roundness of it actually yeah. looks like it completely dwarfs my wrist. You right. can't tell that there's a wrist there. Right. Um, but the little golden feels... pillow doesn't look that way. Yeah. No. The little the the little golden pillow actually <laughs> no it felt quite nice. The height is the real thing. It's like the first edition Apple Watch is uh is fairly you know I think it's about the the height of the the Moto 360. It's not it's not super high off your wrist, but it's high enough that anybody who's used to a like a very thin tiny little watch. Yeah. If you want it under your cuffs. Yes. It'll it'll be a little bit so, strange. So the 42 plus that height felt a little bulky to me. Yeah. The 38 felt just fine. And UI wise, are you going to miss those extra little four little millimeters? I don't think so. But again, my fingers are, are or the or the battery life. Yes, or the, the battery life. A little bit the, less that's, too. That's, that oh, is, is it? Yes. yes. Oh, I guess it. So would the be. yeah, the quoted battery life. Um, the 18 hour battle, battery life is actually for the 38, and then in small print they're like the 42 millimeter is expected to get slightly more okay. battery life. Slightly. <laughs> And that so was the one of the thing things that, we learned was mm -hmm. the battery life stuff. We had we didn't all, know that six months ago. We all didn't. they said was at the end of the day right. you can charge it, mm -hmm. and we're like, I guess that means you don't charge it during the day. Hopefully and they, not. They came out and said, you know, based on our tests, we're talking about Apple performance tests again here, that you can get through a day and 18 hours, 18 hours based yeah. on their very specific usage. Yeah. One thing that uh, Motorola did right is that the band is really cl close to the bottom of the watch. Mm -hmm. So that's more comfortable. Of course, it means the watch is more likely to catch in a cuff. Where does the band sit on the Apple Watch? Is it kind of more in the middle? It depends slightly on My, what band you're using. Attached. Okay. Uh, some of the bands, like the Sport Band, does sort of like that curve into the Apple Watch. Um, but it's, I think it sits about, I don't know, two or three millimeters mm -hmm. off uh, off the bottom of the watch. And it, it hooks in pretty nicely. I didn't find it. I was wearing long sleeves and I did the, you know, the pullover and the pullback test and I didn't really have any problems with it. And the fits are really exact. And even with the buckle, when you close it properly, it just feels stuck. Let's talk battery life real quickly. Um, yeah. All day. <laughs> All day. All day, if every day. The day. If you go to bed. If you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're not including sleep. They, they sleep do for eight expect hours. that you need to sleep. We know Tim Cook sleeps for very long. Dracula little. would yes. not. I've heard <laughs> off the record that people yeah. are, like, people, you can use it for a day. Like, it'll last until the next morning, but then you have to take it off and charge it. And that's inconvenient because you want to be using it. So it just makes sense to charge it at night. I, I think we're going to, you know, I've never understood why people are so worried. Of course, you're wearing a pebble. You get seven days. It's on all sure. the time. You I actually think it. it's a problem because I never I never bother to charge. Oh, you forget. Yeah. The pebble. Yeah. I think one day is good because you just train yourself to charge everything. it every night. I'm going to plug in my exactly MacBook, my, my phone, and my watch all at once. I go to bed in the morning. They'll all be ready to go. Andy, did you say something? Well, I think, I mean, no, I, I, I think one, that, of the, one of the products. Hold on a second, Alex. Andy? Yep. No, I, I was agreeing with Jason. That was exactly my experience. I was oh, my, my pebble was always running down to zero because <laughs> I was not in the habit of charging every day. Whereas the after the first software update on the Moto 360, it gets at easily a one full day and then easily into the next morning. And you know, at, at the end of the day, you're going to take this off and you're going to put it on your nightstand anyway. And because this, it's not a it's not a plug-in thing. It's not even a magnetic thing. It's just drop it onto this cradle. You may as well put it in and get it recharged again. 
Um, all right. And so I, uh, how do you think it's going to do? Is it uh, now based on every... Oh, go ahead, Alex. I'm sorry. You had something to say. No, all I was going to say is I think that, you know, there'll be a lot of charging opportunities. You know, like I think that people who are commuting are going to end up having something, a little charger in their car that they they possibly pop it on, you know, for, for long commutes and so on and so forth. If they're, you know, I think if they're like me, they'll throw chargers everywhere. <laughs> the chargers are not super expensive, I think. They're... Six, $30 yeah, or $40, $40, depending on how long the cable is. There's, yes. a, there's a nice accessories page, again, for people who are looking to uh, see what bands they, they can afford for the watch. Um, it's all in the uh, the store, although none of them are currently available. We were told uh, by a couple Apple reps that... Not even although, the accessories. Yeah, the accessories will be available, but they may not be available immediately with right. the pre-order of the yeah. watch. So you may, you may have to wait to get your fancy band. Get the band you want. Yes, exactly. Get the band you want with your collection and then purchase the Well, that's the other another one. thing. You know, when, I got, when, we, when, we, when there's iPhone shortages, sometimes you get a Sprint phone and you want it, a T-Mobile phone. You know, mm -hmm. will there be like, oh... If you really want to watch today, you're going to have to buy the steel one. I wouldn't be surprised. Although, yeah. I, again, if it may, they're talking about having reservations <laughs> for the try-on process, and it may be once you try something on, you have the option to put in your reservation, and then they give you a, like, come back at this date, and we will, you know, service you <laughs> with a watch. Mm. Um, but that, I mean, I, I think it really depends uh, on, again, what you're getting. Um, if you're even considering something... <laughs> outrageously expensive, and uh, what the popular models will be. Mm -hmm. I think, I think Apple will sell quite a few sports, uh, but I also think we'll see uh, a lot of demand for the regular watch. We were talking yesterday with uh, Nir Eyal, who is an expert in the psychology of uh, game addiction and app addiction mm -hmm. and so forth, and uh, we, we talked about something called price anchoring, and I've yep. talked about mm -hmm. this with uh, also with Daniel uh, Ariely, who's the author of Predictably Irrational. Wall Street Journal does this. They have a low price item that yeah. they don't expect anybody to buy, but they put it there to establish that, oh, this is a pretty, the second item is a pretty good It gets good you deal. in the door. Yeah. Is is that what's going to happen with a sport watch? Is that the anchor? You ever, ever bought a Mac on, online when you go in there and it says, well, just for 100 bucks more, you can get this, just for another 100 bucks. And then you start adding and it starts going. Yeah. Pretty soon you've built a $30,000 Mac Pro. The old joke in marketing was that you always have a low price item to get someone in the door. You have the middle price item that everyone gets and you have the premium item that the people who think they're too good for the middle class, like the middle. So the steel really is the item. You think now, I now may be revising, especially now that we've seen the price, that they're going to get a lot of sales on the steel that, yeah, that it, may end up being except for roller derby queens <laughs> the, the price is the close enough the price is closer mm -hmm. than i think we feared i think a right. bunch of us started to panic and a think like oh god plus, it's gonna be a thousand dollars and it's you know it's in the ballpark in fact if you if you bought a sport and then added in a leather band you're within a hundred dollars of mm -hmm. buying a hundred dollars more jason the blank mm -hmm. one that's with the, key, the leather isn't band yeah. isn't that the key it's small increments now i have to tell you i won't tell you who but a friend of mine said oh i want the one with the mickey mouse face on it and so they're gonna have a problem here because People go there and go, oh, I like, I know uh, they all have the Mickey Mouse face, but, but that person said, oh, but I like that and order, it was going to order that mm -hmm. one because it has the Mickey Mouse face. It was face. John Dvorak, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> but it's I think they have a step in the buying process where you, where it, set, where it shows you the faces. So you, like, I, but I think this explains why Apple wants you to come into the store where course. they've trained their people. There is a, there is a little bit of a learning curve here. This is the one I want, yeah. the 42 millimeter. Beautiful with Johnny Ive style claws, grab you by the ankles, lift you up and shake you and <laughs> shake you and shake you until all your money drops <laughs> yep, down to right. the well of that beautifully designed table. I got to measure my wrist. I don't know how many millimeters my wrist is. Fabric tape. You'll, you'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if I only had fabric tape. No, it's a... Uh, You're what, a thespian. You make <laughs> costumes. I don't have a fabric tape. You can buy them tape. for like a dollar at a I CBS. know, I'll get a fabric tape. But yeah, uh, the one thing that kind of bummed me out was, you know, there is a fair amount to be said about the retail experience and Tim Cook says a little bit at the end of the uh, at the end of the the uh, presentation. Oh, the retail is going to be this way, and we have special tables. <laughs> and I was like, "All right, this is a perfect introduce introduction to Angela Arendt." And then she did not appear. Well, yet they again. they were, mm -hmm. and it was a ninety minute event, and mm -hmm. they had a front row, and Eddie Q was there, Craig Federighi was there, Angela Arendt was there. They were all there, yeah. They were all in the front row, mm -hmm. uh, but I think that they were there in state, and I, I don't, I I think it would have been nice to get her up. But frankly, they had a lot to say in a short period, relatively short. Yeah, period. but they could have yeah. said something else that was very oh. important by not having an all-male presentation. Well, that's true, and Samsung did so well with that, didn't they? On the S6. yeah, well, Christy, uh, Christy, Christy Turlington, Tur yeah, she Christy was a woman. Turlington. Well, she's the first woman that Apple has had on the stage in five years. What? Yeah. Mm. So oh I think to do, to do a presentation, do a presentation rather than, and she rather was a than like a demo. Yes, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. She exactly. was a supermodel. No, including, I think including well, software yeah, demos because the Mokko, last right? time was Angie Moko yeah. with uh, what? Mm. Holy cow. Yeah. 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 So Burke, who's the master of model making here at the Twit <laughs> Brick House, has made me a 
32 and a 48 millimeter. Now, Burke, I need a 150 millimeter strap. Can you go? No. no. <laughs> so there's the size. And so you can see what that would look like on your wrist or compare it to the Moto 360. And you say that, or look, it's exact. It's pretty much exactly the size. Well, of your yeah, pebble. but the Pebble's got yeah. all of the stuff that extends on either yeah. side of it, so it's actually more well, well, than Pebble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. So I don't. I so Serena, you 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 might buy the forty two or. Um, I think I'm pretty much set on the thirty eight, but the forty two was less bulky than I expected yeah. it to Not be. Not as honest. bad. I'm going forty two. Yeah. yeah, I think I might. Um, in next in like intervening years like next year or the year after i may go 42 if they uh decrease the height a little bit right i think the 42 with the height on my little tiny girl wrist is probably a little bit too much uh but for the majority of people i think it should be yeah. just fine yeah. slender I, Slen word. yes exactly slender what you don't like little tiny girl wrist is that not the not, well, for not one a good thing, adjective I, you're not <laughs> really that cover small band. i don't uh, are you yeah, I, mean, yes, I don't know i don't know anyway how many I mean, people in roller derby get away with yeah. that not that yeah. time. <laughs> they get the I'm elbow, sorry. not the wrist. Yeah, maybe. exactly. My, my theory. Um, um, no, uh, what was it? Someone was, uh, someone in the chat room was saying something interesting, and now, now I so, haven't found um, mm -hmm. We'll teach them. Can I, can I just say that it? we do really need to point out that as excited as we're all getting about this, we're talking about $600 plus for a stainless steel watch that in itself doesn't do anything. It only makes the phone more useful and more handy. And that for six hundred dollars, that can if if someone says I've got a six hundred dollar budget to radically improve the way that I use the computers and the, the services that I have in my house and in my office and in my personal life, I'm not sure if I would steer them towards that. Leo's if they were saying that, if they're saying yeah. that if they were saying that I wanted a I wanted to spend hundreds of dollars on a really cool watch, and it's nice if it has features too, maybe. Andy, but, yeah, Andy, what people are missing Andy. right now is as Andy's speaking, Leo's watching look, the animation of this. Look at this, watch. Andy, and then tell me how much you would pay. Can you show my screen? I, I, I can see the money flying out of Leo's now wallet. Now tell me how much you would pay for this. Ooh. I, just, I just need a gif of that. We're looking at the Milanese loop and how it connects. So I had an insight, Andy, and I think you'll understand this because you use an Android phone. One of the reasons I use an Android phone over an iPhone is I want... The nice thing about the Android phone in the larger space is I can use widgets. So I turn on the phone and I get information immediately. Mm -hmm. I don't have to dig into an icon and launch an app. I have my mm -hmm. calendar. I have time. I have weather. All of that stuff because of the widgets uh, on an Android phone. And that to me is the uh, kind of the compelling reason. There's my email. There's New York Times headlines. There's messages. There's my calendar. And I don't have to dig. I don't have to launch an app. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that to me is really the single most compelling feature that's missing in the iPhone, this grid of uh, icons, yeah. just doesn't speak to me, literally. That the, that's what the watch is. The watch is a $600 widget panel. <laughs> and you know what? I think it may be the single thing that, that can make me happy again with the iPhone. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I, I, I'm not going to do a that deep drill down into, in, into philosophical, what, what should Apple be making? What, what does this mean that they're making this? I can, the only thing I can say with absolute truth is that I really wish they had found a way to make a decent watch, smart watch that cost anywhere under $300. And I really, really wish that it wasn't so, as Renee said, tilted above, oh, well, you can have this, the, the, the cheap one for just working out, but here's the nice designer one that we think is the middle of the road one. I, I just wish they had found a way to say, we've decided to say, here's 300 bucks to make design the best mo best looking watch we can possibly do. But that's we not Apple's not way. Look it. at the MacBook. I, don't you think that the next generation, well, the generation the, after, they could do a less expensive one? The MacBook has features, and it has operational differences between one and the other. But the the, the thing that I'm, I'm really trying to get my head around, to, to the extent that part one of my write-up uh, posted uh, uh, late, uh, late this morning, early this afternoon, part two is the part where I talk about the watch. And when I talk about... Uh, the edition, it really is, the sneak preview is, it's just two sentences and it says that my feelings on the edition are complicated and I don't feel like I can articulate them without another week's worth of reflection. And that literally is the end of that section because I don't know how I feel about we could pour any material into this mold. We poured gold into it. We, that cost us an extra two grand, maybe, in materials. But we decided to see how much we could ask for it and see how there's nothing wrong with running a business that way. I'm just truly trying to get my head around the idea of making a product that way. Yeah, I think going back to what we were talking about earlier, Andy, it's it really is not it's not a how much money can we make off of this product. It's this product is priced for a certain uh, subsection of the people yeah, who will it, only pay 
this yeah. amount of money. I, I at, mean, our boss. But at the, but at the same, I'm sorry. Yeah. At, at the same time, why not thirty thousand? Why not a hundred thousand dollars? Why sure. not eight thousand? Just having the platinum tier for it. You know, I, I, just, I, I feel I like just, the addition I just think is it's very, not... very weird to say that we're we're just going to guess at how much money we're going to. We're, we're there is the, uh, when when you can put any dollar amount on it. You're I believe that to an extent you're saying there this object has no value. I believe that in a, in a philosophical way. Well, going back to the regular, you know, the the sport and the regular Apple Watch, um, the thing that I think is going to be really interesting is next year's model or two years mm -hmm. from now's model, yeah. because if it follows the same kind of pattern that we've seen in the iPad and the iPhone and the iPod and everything else, you're going to be able to get the original Apple Watch for fifty or a hundred dollars cheaper. And if you have the three forty nine Apple Watch Sport, as suddenly the two forty nine Apple Watch Sport. Um, uh, from last year that still runs the same operating system but is maybe a little bit bulkier, that becomes a lot easier of a sell for people who are like, oh, well, I never really thought about getting a smartwatch. But now that this is potentially an option, uh, this this might be something that I can do. Could Apple price something at 249 this year? Could they have, you know, initiated the, the Apple Watch Sport? Possibly, but the the margins I'm guessing would not be good enough for them to right. be able to innovate the way that they want to be innovating. The yeah. iPhone and the iPad didn't start at a price this low. I mean, I, I accept that it's no. I accept that it's an accessory, and so it's a little bit different. But I feel like this is still a product that starts at 349, and it's the first generation. And the existence, I think, the existence of the edition is a distraction, which is why they why they didn't talk about it in any great detail, didn't show the gold video on stage, because it's it's playing it's, to a it's different, a different audience, group and, and, it, and it's involved, sort of right? aspirational, but, it, it, but the bottom line is, I would agree more with Andy if this $10,000 product was unlike the other products, but the only difference is the metal is different. Yeah, and also the, the oh, conversation that they is get that to have. agree or disagree? <laughs> I just started a meerkat because we're going to talk about that a little bit later. <laughs> the conversations that they get to have by having, a, uh, like, like there are some really expensive watches that have really crappy plastic mechanisms in it and has no relationship with anything. But it, this this product allows them to have the people at this event that they had. It allows the watch to be in the magazines. Allows them to have the conversations and be in Fashion Week and do all these things. And then regular people can buy one for three fifty. Yes, they don't have to spend ten thousand. Yeah, it's not the Rolex option, right? No. <laughs> like you can't get a Panerai for three fifty. Do you, you have, have a fake watch that uh, Jason can use? Yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah. I, I think most importantly, a $10,000 watch makes a $350 watch and an $850 watch look cheap. Yes, you know, that's I think true, that's, too. That's probably the most important piece of this, uh, of having a $10,000 watch, is to have us know that we're buying the little watch instead of the $850 watch, you know. Well, is that, is that thing Gruber said a while ago about uh, Coke, where no matter whether you're the president or you're just a guy on the street, everyone's drinking the same Coke. Yeah. And you can get a gold watch, sure, but if, only if you have $350, you're having the same experience Actually, as someone Actually, I think that's an interesting idea, oh. isn't it? Like, yeah. well, no, I, I, uh, that, that may look prettier, but I got the same watch You got inside. the same watch. Yeah, exactly. My guts you, can, same. you can get a It you doesn't hurt the iPhone dollars. that you could buy a Swarovski blinged out there iPhone. It doesn't hurt the Volkswagen that you can buy a Porsche. The Virtu exists, but yeah. it doesn't mm -hmm. put anybody... Well, I, it's interesting. I think Apple is right to kind of push it aside because it is kind of a hot-button topic, but at the same time... All right. Uh, I, I disagree with that point of view, but that's a half-hour conversation, so I'll simply no, say it's that a, I No, and it's a good conversation. I think, I think it's a fascinating conversation. Yep. Um, it, and I, your point uh, is a good, well a taken, good one for, a, a good one for 20 minutes past two, a bad one for three minutes past uh, in, until four. <laughs> well, uh, That's my secret, Andy. I always wait till the end of the show. Here's the good news. We have such a big panel, and uh, Steve Gibson's uh, under the weather, so we aren't going to do uh, security now at 1 o'clock as we normally would do. <laughs> good so, news. He's sick. Here's the good news. <laughs> this is a four-hour show. All right. <laughs> It's a telethon now. Until we raise one more dollar than we did last <laughs> yeah. year. Until we raise the money for Leo to get an addition. <laughs> oh, there's a thought. I could do a Patreon or a, a I could do a Kickstarter. We could just buy like, Leo like, an addition. Just like New Year's. I guarantee you there will be a Kickstarter <laughs> to buy somebody an addition at some this point. This was a mistake. A there was a like Kickstarter kick for a guy to ride on the, what was it, the Emirates yeah. or uh, the uh, Etihad uh, suite? There was a Kickstarter for potato salad. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no potato limits on salad. this thing You now. can do anything you want nowadays on that <laughs> Kickstarter. Uh, I have started a Meerkat because we want to demonstrate Meerkat, but we have lots more to talk about. As I said, the show is going to go a little bit long. If anybody wants to take a bathroom break, now would be a good time. <laughs> Uh, we got a great live audience here. This is fun. And we have a great panel. Serenity Caldwell from iMore. Renee Ritchie from iMore. Uh, from uh, Rwanda, Alex Lindsay on a green screen. Jason Snell from Six Colors. Andy Anatko. 
This is this is these are the people Seriously. I would spend my life with all the time right. if I could. <laughs> I want you to invite you to my house and just you can move in with me and Lisa and just live with me because you guys are the greatest. I well, love the band it. will solve crimes. <laughs> yes, yeah. it is. It's the Justice League. Oh, but only yes. if Andy brings whatever. Is that scotch, Andy? That is that is my Ool Conference Green Spot whiskey. Oh, oh, you know you, you can you can tell that I'm not a big drinker because I got this two years ago. But oh my goodness, goodness this is tasty stuff. Would you like and when you mentioned we this time, we should all be drinking whiskey. I thought, you know what, we, thought, you know what we taste right now? <laughs> Some of this beautiful Green Spot. The single sun pot. has gone right. over the yard arm. If you are interested, <laughs> I can I can. It's arrange. always five o'clock somewhere. No, I'm, I'm good for now. Are you okay? Because we have plenty of brown liquor in the other room, <laughs> and good stuff too. Yeah, I, I keep the good, good stuff. stuff here. So dangerous. I know. I'm like Lou Grant. <laughs> That's true. I'm going to turn it, into a remember? 1940s. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. yeah. That's a classic. I've worked with many, many people. I worked in journalism for, mm -hmm. for all yeah. these years. you got to have I a know, bottle in you, The bottle in the bottom drawer? Yeah. That is a thing that really still happens. You have to have the novel in the middle drawer and the bottle in the we've bottom seen, drawer. We've seen Mad Men, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> it still Actually, happens. Tom oh, Merritt bought, and I think it's still here, yeah. He bought the Mad Men... Uh, whiskey, nice. the, the metal lined whiskey things. I think he left it here. I don't know. Maybe he decided it was better not to have it at home. Our show today brought to you by, we're going to come back with lots more in, from Mac Break Weekly. I'm sure they'll find something to talk about. It's okay. You can show the Coke can. <laughs> oh, no. Are you hiding it? You don't want to give him a no, free plug? I, you, you mentioned that it's time for a bathroom break. So please tell me more about Squarespace. <laughs> I would like to know more about Squarespace. <laughs> <laughs> Coke is already on low. Yeah, I'll open break. <laughs> I should. <laughs> Hi, Meerkat. Our show today brought to you by Mac, by uh, Mac Break Weekly and Squarespace, the place to make your next website, whether it's a, a commerce site, a blog, your uh, portfolio. If you're a pro, Squarespace is easy to use, elegant, beautiful templates. The latest version of Squarespace has such gorgeous templates. And, of course, they're all mobile responsive. It means your site will look good no matter what size screen. That's important nowadays. You don't know what resolution, what size screen, but it doesn't matter. Squarespace automatically resizes the images. When you upload them, I think it makes nine different versions. It resizes the screen. I just love it. Simple, powerful, beautiful. Making changes is clearer than simpler than ever. You can actually change, uh, update your site, modify your site, change the template and all of that. On the fly, your content stays the same. You can see how everything looks as you're doing it. No separate preview mode anymore. And if you want help, Squarespace does have a great portal with uh, lots of workshops and videos and 24-7 live chat email and email support direct from their offices. They don't outsource their support. It's from Squarespace Pros right there in New York City. Squarespace starts at $8 a month. $8 a month. That's the hosting. That's the software. And it's a domain name when you register for, uh, when you buy for a year. It's a great deal. All Squarespace sites include e-commerce, too. Now, on the $8 site, you can get one item, but that means it's perfect for donations, for fundraisers. Nonprofits are going to love it. With cover pages, you can set... Aw, that's a cute pooch. <laughs> With cover pages, you can set up a beautiful one-page online presence in minutes. It's perfect for creating quick landing pages for your brand, your personal identity, to promote a product. Start your trial right now. No credit card is needed. All you have to do is go to squarespace.com, click the Get Started button, but you got to use the offer code MACBREAK to get 10% off your first purchase. Squarespace, a better web awaits. Build it yourself with squarespace.com. Uh, Leo Laporte here with Mac Break Weekly, our daily descent into the world of Kool-Aid. People think that we've drunk the Kool-Aid, but I have to say, I believe that I'm very brutally honest about Apple products. It's not the only thing I cover. And uh, when Apple does something great, I want to say they're doing something great. And I, uh, the MacBook is great. I'm very excited about the potential of the watch. Mm -hmm. I was more skeptical, but as I, at, first of all, as I've worn Android Wear for six months now and realized the value of that. Mm -hmm. Somebody said that uh, one of the, I, mean, I can't remember who it was, one of the value of the watch is you just never take your phone out. Yeah. That yep. it is, yeah. does everything your phone does. This it was is Oh, so I was, I was just going to say, like, when I was a little kid, my father bought an Apple II and left it at home so that he didn't have to drive downtown to go to IBM and use a mainframe. <laughs> right. And then I got an iPhone, and I don't have to go back to my Mac all the time, especially right. when I'm not home. And people I know of you who are using the watch, and from my use of the watch, I'm not going to have to reach for my phone as often. And that sounds silly because they're brief things, but they're also important things, and they're things that it's in my pocket, it's in my bag, it's across the room, it's charging. That 
it just takes away another small amount of things that I don't have to go to a larger device to do. Look, at some point more than a century ago, somebody looked at the pocket watch and said, you know what? If I strapped this to my wrist, I wouldn't have to keep getting it out of my pocket. <laughs> and that really it's caught kind of the same on. Thing, isn't and it? It's yeah. kind of like that. Well, I think for the Apple Watch to be successful, it does need to make our um, interactions with our phone the ones we do that take a, a, a lot longer, where we're right. spending minutes. And the watch should be for all those things that we still do today on our phones that only take seconds, and we don't really need to get our phones out of our pocket. I and if we can do that, that that'll be a win. I do think that um, the how you use the watch is really going to depend on your daily usage and what you use your iPhone for, if you have an iPhone at all. Um, and obviously, you need one. You need a, a 5S or 5C or up uh, to be able to do that. Uh, but the the real the really interesting thing to me about the watch, uh, besides the fact that it will hopefully decouple me from the big screen to just being like, oh, I can select the notifications that I wanna that I wanna pay attention to, instead of having to freak out and pull my phone out every time the phone buzzes in case it might be Renee with like an emergency for I'm more. Instead, it's like, oh, I only set it so that certain notifications buzz and all I have to do is look at my watch and it just says, oh, you know, oh, this is a message from like a skater. So I don't have to worry about that right now. And I'm not, I don't even have to, you know, pull it up. I don't, and if I, it is some message from Renee or if it's a message from my parents, all I have to do is pull it up to my face and I actually get more context. Like the, the context-based notifications is really exciting to me. The idea of maps on my wrist versus something that I have to carry around and maps that can intelligently buzz me when I have to go left or right is really cool. And actually the, uh, there was a small little demo, um, for you know various things that the watch could do uh, when we were in the hands-on area, um, and uh, you know people make fun of the the messaging. You know, oh, I can I can send silly pictures to people. I can send people my heartbeat. But I think about the things that you know, like I think about how bad I am at talking to my parents who live on this coast and get frequently very annoyed that they're like, Sweetie, why don't you call us more often? You know, and I I feel really bad about that. But sometimes it's like, okay, phone conversations. So you're you know, just gonna send mom your heartbeat? Yeah. Well, no, but it's that's not no, 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 what no, she no, wants. no. No, but it's still get an emoji uh, like every. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm only the classiest, but no, it's it's more about. See, being if you even just more... drew a little heart for mom. Yeah, yeah it's, I think it's, that might be kind of nice. It's being more in communication with the people yeah. you care about and having it be easier. Where it's, I don't know why it feels more difficult. Well, actually, no, I do. The the iPhone is a multi-stream device. We talk about, oh, it's hard to multitask. But in honesty, when when in the last, like anybody who owns a smartphone, you pull out your phone, you're saying, oh, I'm gonna look up directions. Tell me the times that like, that actually ends up in you looking at directions and nothing right. else but directions. You know, you, you browse it for 15 minutes and you end up like checking on things. And the same thing goes where you're like, oh, I wanna, you know, text my mother. Uh, and then, oh, wait, but there are emails that I have to respond to. And somebody yelled at me on Twitter and, oh, Instagram and, oh, Facebook and, oh, all of this. And all of a sudden, like, there's so many notifications that you're just completely overwhelmed. With this, it's as easy as, oh, I'm going to send an, a message to mom. I pull it up. I tap, you know, the, the friends button. Mom would I tap like mom. That. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's it's just, it, they're, they're little things. And it's easier things. for you. And Will I be able to put my grocery list on it? Because uh, I hold right now. I hold my phone as yeah, I'm, there's app. Yeah. It's a real pain in the butt. Like we had we saw the apps yesterday. We saw like the Uber app. That's fantastic. That for was me. amazing. Yeah, you just tap. Like, mm -hmm. I, like I, I hold sit there like with like an idiot holding my phone. But the thing with that's so like to what Serenity said is yes, the the watch does take a percentage of the things and offload them off the starship onto the shuttlecraft. Makes it much more easy right. to maneuver. But there's also things that it enhances. Like the it's got the um, the heart rate monitor, which doesn't have the on the watch. It's got, sorry, it doesn't have on the phone. It's got, for the communications, it has the sketch, it has the tap, it has all these things. Every category that they've targeted it as, it's got a couple extra added features as well that you don't have on the phone. Serenity said like it's compatible with iPhone 5 up. You can only have Apple Pay on an iPhone 6 or 6 Plus right now, but if you have the Apple Watch, suddenly you can have Apple Pay going all the way back to the iPhone 5. So for a lot of people, it, yes, it will take those tasks over, but it'll give you more you can do as well. There's extra value in having a watch you don't get without it. Yeah, I mean, again, I don't think that the Apple Watch is, you know, it's, again, it's not for everybody. Um, I think that for people who use their phones very often. Which is you, everybody, yeah, face well, we, it. We That's joke. all you see nowadays is people walking around into polls with their phone. We joke about, oh, well, uh, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to pay $600 for something that saves me half a millimeter of time. Oh, no. You know, I my we first of all, so socially but, more acceptable to be looking at your watch than it is to have your remember phone. Remember what Tim Cook said? He goes, I, I've been wanting to have a 
phone call on my watch since I was five years old. Right. I have Tulio, but I don't have $180 billion to make it a reality. <laughs> I'm happy Tim Cook did that. Thank you, Tony Stark. Mm. Cook. Yeah. I uh, No, I'm, I understand completely why people are people don't want the watch. I understand why Andy's skeptical. You don't have to I buy under- the watch or well, the well, MacBook. Well, exactly. No, not, it's not I'm it's not, not going to make you do that. Not, yeah. I, I should I should point out that I've been wearing this on my wrist every single day since September. I'm a big the, fan of this. Is a Moto they, Moto 360, right? Well, yeah, and, and but and and the core things that do that it does well are the same things that the Apple Watch does well. What all I'm saying is that I wish it were less expensive, even if that made meant that it did not have haptic sensor, it didn't have a couple of different uh, different things, because when you start, it's. It's a really, really hard thing to ask someone to spend six hundred dollars for a stainless steel smartwatch. Even three hundred fifty or four hundred dollars is. I'm not saying it's a ridiculous amount of money. I'm not saying it's stupid for anybody to pay it. I'm saying that for the sort of features that are most important to people, I believe they could have done a version of this that was really great, would have sold like hotcakes, and could have been sold for less than three hundred bucks. They That's will. That's all I'm saying. They will. Two years from now, it'd be just like mm-hmm. the iPod. It's just like oh, saying yeah. the well, first oh. iPod, oh, that's too expensive. Everybody wants a music player. If it were only $200, it'd sell like hotcakes. Well, mm-hmm. yeah. And it was the iPod, and when the iPhone came out, we couldn't understand why that would be the case. You know, why you'd spend so much money on a phone, and then we all did. And, we're and, and I think know, the, we see this the over The current and over iPhone now, is like $1,000. Yeah, mm-hmm. six dollars No, it is. It's 200 bucks for most people in the United yeah. States. Okay, that's a good point. Subsidized, nobody really sees the real price. But the Apple, truth Apple, is, Apple, the real Apple price care is to make actually, a lot of money. And and I feel like... What, what in a way that Apple's done is said the, the the watch you want is about the same as an iPhone. And I don't know. I think that, well, we'll see, Andy. We'll see. Yeah. You, you well, know, Apple I, is not, again, I'm not I'm Apple has kind not, of said I'm we don't skeptical. expect to sell this as well as the iPhone. We expect it's, to sell I, I, 5 million. Let, let, me just, let me just tell you from, oh, my, from my own point of view where I, where I write reviews and uh, either explicitly or embedded inside of the thing is, are you asking me, should I buy this? And I will tell you, I will give you my advice. Well, that's when different. You have, you're right. When, when you're when, doing well, that. When you, yeah. when, you have, when you have a Pebble watch that costs 99 bucks up to $200, when you have an Android Wear device that costs 200 bucks to $250, I can say, look, even if it's just a cool watch that has these really cool replaceable faces, that's at least 120 bucks like right there. The ability for the phone in my pocket to quietly and at my control give me a notification or make a make an app present itself to my watch when it needs to come into four like when i'm walking and getting walking directions on my watch but the, the, i get a little haptic buzz saying oh by the way you're gonna have to turn left or by right the way, the next intersection. that's a killer good, killer good, feature good, good good time for you to actually look at your watch to see whether it's going to be yeah. left or right that's great stuff when you start talking about well the cheapest one is 350 that the or, or 350 or 400 dollars I have to start saying, is the person I recommend this to going to feel as though they're getting a value for 350 to 400 When you increase that to 600 bucks, then you start. I start thinking, I really don't know what to tell you. I'm not, I'm not going to tell you not to buy it. I'm, I can't tell you whether you will get $600 worth of value out of it. That's not a problem that I had with the iPad, say. That's not a, pro- a problem that I have with many Windows uh, notebooks that are well constructed that cost five or six hundred bucks. With the watch, I honestly don't know if I can stand by a recommendation that six hundred dollars is you're going to get the you're going to get that value back off of that purchase. I still think so, three fifty is going to be the normal point for most people. I'm gonna I'm gonna disagree with my dear friend Andy, who I've known for twenty years, and 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 <laughs> so I do. While you're wrong, Jason. I do this respectfully, <laughs> but I mean, this one when, when I was in MacWorld, one of the things that we debated a lot was how much do you factor a price of a product into its rating, and I think ultimately. As reviewers, our our real job is to describe what a product is good for and uh, how it how it works and if it works well or if it works poorly. And because um, the know consumer what? knows the price, they know I mean, that information. They know how is much money they've got and how much money right. they want to spend. And it's very hard for us because there's no way to really bake in um, because everybody's. Um, financial requirements are going to be different. Their right. priorities are going to be different. In the end, and we don't know this, Andy, and, and you will try out the Apple Watch and discover your feelings about whether it's <laughs> truly useful enough. Um, and then your readers will say, well, yeah, that sounds great, but not for 350 Or they'll say, yeah, 350 that's fine. I, I think we have to see it and try it and, and know that because for some people, they would never expect to buy a watch for 350 uh, And for somebody else, it's just not even a question. Of course, they're going to buy the first generation. And, you know, for me, the more important point is, does it live up to what Apple wants it to be um, or does it not? And we'll we'll find that out. But it's very hard for me to j- make recommendations about, like, look, should anybody buy this for this price? Because everybody's price sensitivity is going to be different. Okay. Yeah. Andy's raising his hand, Andrew. Okay. 
Well, I do need to respond. I, that never factors into my, my my rating per se, although I don't have uh, my mouse ratings in my review. But I do feel as though what value is this device giving for the amount of money that they're asking for it? Uh, if, for instance, I'm, I'm looking at a, a $59 WinPad, uh, Windows, uh, Windows tablet, that... If this were a $200 tablet, I would have a hard time recommending it. At $60, I can say, look, you might have a really good use for it. Here are the things I think it does very, very well. And I'm thinking that's a really good thing, chiefly because I think it's, it delivers a lot of value for what you get for it. That's not the only metric, but I think that's a valuable metric. If Apple were to sell the, the new MacBook for $5,000, I could not avoid saying that is an insane amount of money to charge for something like this. Again, I don't. I just want to make sure people are very, very clear on what they're getting for whatever money they spend on it. So I, I, I don't make that a, an important metric, but that does creep into my decision on whether I can simply say yes, this is a great thing to get. You, I think you'll be very, very happy with it. All right. I, th I don't think we need to belabor the point. I think you made your point very clearly and well, and I agree with you. I did the same thing on that particular fifty-nine dollar win book, uh, which I would not recommend at, at any higher price point. But at fifty-nine dollars, it's kind of cool. Um, uh, I'm going to buy the watch, and I think a lot of people are going to buy the watch. We'll see if it uh, becomes a success. And we did learn a few new details. For instance, <laughs> the battery is replaceable, um, although they said you'll probably get three years of battery life. It's mm -hmm. like any other app, like your iPhone, the battery is replaceable. Yeah. They could pry it open somehow and put yeah. a new mm -hmm. one in at a, at a, at a cost. They're, they're already shipping the right size rocks to every store so they can <laughs> smash it open. With, with the degree of precision. <laughs> uh, we also uh, are learning that it has 8 gigabytes of storage. Uh, not all of that would be allowed for music, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that, that that's not that surprising to me when you think about uh, an 8 gigabyte phone, for instance, how much of that is actually available for the user and available for personal uh personal interaction. Uh, what uh, what 9to5Mac originally reported and what they have apparently confirmed uh, with Apple is that you'll have two gigabytes free, so about the size of a big iPod shuffle for on-device music. That's not streaming music, mind you, but when you're away from your phone. Um, and then uh, a little bit of space for on-device photos. Again, 75 photos, megs for on-device. Yeah, device. 75 megabytes uh, for when you're away from your phone. Um, and then the rest of that is presumably either being taken up by the operating system along with you're talking about um, app local cache data as well as we haven't you know Apple watch apps right now are basically extensions they run as widgets on the on the app or on the phone or sorry on the watch from the phone uh, but that won't be always the case in fact that they've implied that later this year we'll probably see native watch apps and once we see native watch apps I expect that those native watch apps will need some space just like right. iPhone apps need right. some space yeah. And I mean, I think the away from phone usage is is really mostly for exercisers, right? Yeah. Um, I, well, I, uh, I, I Go ahead. No, I, I, I think there's going to be, I mean, I think that there'll be a lot of places. I think that the interesting thing is not just the away from phone, but the proximity of being somewhere in the in the house with the phone, I think is going to be. Um, you know, for, for if, you, if you've got a, an extended Wi-Fi area, I mean, you're going to still be able to have access to that. So I think that's going to be an interesting place. Yeah, and that I was interesting. interested. The phone has not only Bluetooth, but I mean, the but watch wi -Fi. is Wi-Fi. We knew it had Wi-Fi, but the Wi-Fi was built into the Bluetooth for Race to Sleep. So it would make the Bluetooth handshake and broadcast and then transfer data over Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. What they said yesterday is that if you're on the same Wi-Fi network, it'll extend yeah. the bubble of Bluetooth. So as range. long as I'm at my house, it doesn't yeah. matter where my yeah. phone is. Yeah. Such a smart that. feature. Cool. Yeah. Because cool. right, really with my well, Pebble, if I walk eight feet away, yeah. it right. loses it's connection cranky. yeah well no, and, and, and if you're and if you're in a, a company that builds the networks that, you know in a certain way the way we build our networks I'm, i could theoretically have my watch in one state and be using that's an unusual uh, situation but, no, no, but no, <laughs> no, 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 well, no 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 there's a, there's a structure i mean that's it's not it's Yellow not normal no, to put it in perspective it's not normal for <laughs> uh corners, you know most so a lot of businesses but a lot of larger businesses work on on large corporate networks right. and if those if those networks are able to no, manage no, that right. yeah you're it's right. just really interesting okay. to be able to make it made it in this different i'm state, not gonna leave my phone build. in a different state no but like like the great like my sister uses a pebble right now because she doesn't want to carry her phone and all the pages in the hospital are done over an iPhone now. It's, it's just an oh, iPhone system. Mm. Uh, it does use the push notification network and she's looking forward to being able to leave her phone on her desk because she has a, a doctor's coach. She doesn't want to wear, uh, put the yeah. phone in because it's heavy and she'll walk around. She thought she'd have to stay within pebble distance but now she's like, I can just walk through the hospital. You know, it's not I'm sure they're going to be networking quirks there where it's oh, like, oh sure. well, this is a bad handoff and this isn't the same network zone and all that. We don't support yeah. that. But, but I think that in, in a lot of 
uh, Wi-Fi networks, the the idea that you'd be able to move around, and especially like in your house, to be yeah. able to move so more than ten feet away from the yeah. the the phone with the watch, have it keep contact. That's a use case. I That's have. a pretty yeah. nice mm -hmm. one. That's a use case I have. I often yep. put the phone in its dock at, yeah. by the bed, and then I go, you know, I'm in the house mm -hmm. the rest of the evening. Oh. If I have my watch, and I could even make a phone call for my exactly. watch. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Oh, I will, I will miss a lot fewer phone calls for one. Well, well it, exactly. and if you think about. If you think about how often you're charging your phone, I mean, you get you get kind of you know if you right. forget to charge it overnight or whatever, and, right. and now you're charging your phone and you're not feeling like you've been disconnected from the rest of the world for that two hours or whatever that you're charging it. What did the uh, what did the audio sound like coming so, out of the watch? Because we never really got an idea of what. That no, was they be. they didn't really have a good environment for us to demo that. It was probably um, noisy. They, yeah. they had us. They had the calls start to complete. Um, and I think we got a couple of seconds on one of them where it's just like it's the audio quality is going to be just terrible here. So it's there's no real point. In so doing we don't it. know if, for instance, it would be acceptable to make a long term phone call. I know people who are making phone calls like this. on their watches, and, and their thing isn't that it's long term. It's that at a certain point, like it's great for yeah, I'm on my way home. Oh, you need milk? Okay, great, I'll right. go get that. But if you want to have a five or ten minute call, that's keeping that battery in screen. Yeah. You know what I love? Audio messages on messages. Yes, yeah, so let me. And I, when they introduced that on I, on OS 10, I thought, or uh, I mean, on the iPhone and uh, iOS uh, 8, I thought this is really great. I love it. Now I get it. Mm -hmm. That's a now. I'm not going to dictate. I'm just going to talk. So this is actually a, a brilliant thing about the watch that I that I found out when I was playing around with the demo, which is Siri, right? Uh, we've all had problems with Siri. Uh, Siri, yeah. you know, Siri has some great features, uh, but it also has, you know, it has some quirks. Uh, you try and, those. yeah, you try and say, like, I try and say my team name for Roller Derby. I'm like, yes, the Cosmonauties are having a party today. Oh, they don't know and, Cosmonauties. Oh, Cosmonauties. It, it ends up being like <laughs> Cosmo not tenants or something <laughs> ridiculous like that. But it's like, all right, so if I'm doing this, if I'm dictating while I'm driving, you know, I don't want to look at my screen because I want to pay attention to the road and it ends up being like Cosmo not tenants. It's like, well, I either have to pull over and change my message. I have to try and redictate it and think about a different word that maybe the phone <laughs> will understand. <laughs> <laughs> or on the watch, there's a new Sing button. Yeah. There's a new button where if you, whatever you dictate to Siri when you're in messages, it shows you what you dictated. And then there's also a button that says send as audio message. I love so that so much. So if it messes so it much. up, yeah. you can just send it as an audio yeah. message. And then you don't have to worry about redictating it. You don't have if to worry about, yeah. The other party has no, an iPhone. No, no, no. Well, an iPhone, yes. Well, well that's, my problem is yeah. that I, I mean, not everybody well, I know is actually, an iPhone no, user. Can I get no, messages? No, because messages, I, it yeah. only works with other iOS. My problem, though, Leo, is that I I, I, I start to that. think in Siri now, so I'm dictating an audio message, and I say, hi, Serenity, comma. comma. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm going to be the there time. soon, period. Yeah. Yeah. And that, then she hears the thing, audio and thinks I'm a moron, yeah. more than that's usual. That's one thing that Android Wear does really, really well. I could not get the speech to text to work on this for the first two or three days because I was using my Siri voice with the watch. As soon as I started talking like this, it was keeping up to me word for word for word. I'm like, oh, my God. I've I don't understand down, you, Andy. Would you just speak to me like a normal person? Yeah. Um, and you can I also too, sense, nice. here's another thing we learned. At least I wasn't going to get one. <laughs> and then as soon as I said, but Lisa, you know, my wife, I could send you my heartbeat. I could draw you pictures. It'll be a way of staying in touch that, as you said, with your, mo with your mom, that's going to be unique. Mm -hmm. She's going to get one. And I think yeah. this will sell, just as I think messages sells more iPhones because I want to. I want to be able to do you audio be a blue messages. Bottle per person. Yeah. yeah, it's not a bad, not a bad idea. And the nice thing is, all this stuff hands off. They're using the same handoff technology. So if you're doing a phone call and you think it's going to be a couple minutes and you don't want to waste your watch battery, you can just send that to your phone and then you're fine. Or you get a message and it's going to take a longer reply. You just send that to your to your phone and you're fine. Mm -hmm. uh, incidentally, we have 410 free. people watching us in an unusual way. Uh, they're <laughs> watching us on Meerkat. 410 <laughs> people. Watching because uh, this Twitter app, we're going to talk about that. That's going to be Alex's pick. Can you see? Are you? Oh, you're watching me. You're one of the 410, <laughs> eh, Jason? I, I have the feed, but strangely, it's very, the, like the aspect, the, the, there's so, something weird about the Zoom. I, okay, I think that Meerkat is designed to be used in portrait mode. And yeah, somebody you, you said you to do it sideways. you the web, the web window. you got to make your web window narrow. Well, I've turned it back to portrait mode, so it should be okay now. But um, I think Meerkat works better in portrait mode, which is, mm -hmm. of course, everybody hates vertical video. Anyway, I don't want to talk about Meerkat <laughs> yet because that's Alex's pick of the week. But we are going to give you a chance. Uh, so somebody says messages does work on all phones. You just have to turn it on in settings. How would I get messages in an Android device? Yeah, well, well, it turns well, it to, yeah. yeah, it'll send. You it'll can send, send SMS. SMS. It'll convert um, it to an MMS if you're using. Yeah, it, it can. So I could send audio, audio as I, MMS. I, I 
believe. I, I would have to test it yeah, because we yeah. Have, yeah. I'm like, I'm not but sure I if believe, I've ever tested it. I believe it. It, it, it's supposed to be an MMS package. Yeah. Oh, and that. there's someone in the chat room who is like using the watch while driving. Um, it's actually a lot easier than trying to press a button because if, if I'm driving, all I have to do is pull up my thing. I don't even have to look at the watch. I just have to be like, send a message to my mother, tell her I'm running five minutes late yeah. and then continue driving. I don't have to I look at a that. screen. Like that's the problem that I have with I the car, that. the car stuff now. And even right. with CarPlay, it's like, I don't want to look at a different screen right. and try and press a button to activate Siri. I just want to talk. I want to say, Hey Siri. And sorry to everybody who was watching. Oh my watching. God, you did it. <laughs> I did it. We had to say, it. hey, S Ahoy yes. time piece. Ahoy, Ahoy time, time piece. piece. <laughs> I was joking. I apparently said it four times during the I'm More show last week. And then oh. Kevin Lynch said it on the stage yesterday and set off every it device. It set off hers. <laughs> yeah. set off oh, really? Mine. He said it on stage? Oh yeah. yeah. He said it on to stage and watch. set off so many yeah. devices. Um, so yeah, uh, also, hey guys, can we do a custom yeah. thing, Apple? That, that like would be not, so nice. Not say a hoy time piece. You know what I do on my uh, my Android, uh, my Moto X is, help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. That's a good one. <laughs> That's you, a great one. And you kind of enjoy saying you know, it every once yeah. in a while. It's, it's, it's weird how you adapt to these things. I, I, I like OK Google, but what I actually do is, it's just so simple, as I'm raising my wrist, to simply tap the screen and remove all doubt that even in a noisy environment, it's going to hear that and start listening. I... Uh, we're going to take a break in a second, but I want to make sure we say everything that uh, all the, there is other news. And we didn't really spend any time on Research Kit. <laughs> that, that is, <laughs> oh. although Apple spent a considerable amount of time on that. It's really Brilliant. cool. Brilliant. It's, yeah. it's Brilliant. hard for consumers to understand, but it's a an exceptionally uh, well thought out idea that will help doctors and help patients and, and potentially move medical research. So forward. here is the. Now, and Dr. Mom, uh, credit to Dr. Mom, who is our resident physician. It's one of the few podcasts who actually has a physician, and it's because <laughs> I'm so elderly. And yeah. mm. we also have a defibrillator. But she says it's mm. actually she has a different, a little bit different take on this. She says this is about getting FDA approval down the road. So what this is going to be is uh, in almost a proof of concept. So she said there will be uh, peer-reviewed uh, articles about this. But what, what they're really doing is demonstrating that the data that they get from, let's say, that Parkinson's app mm -hmm. actually is as good as or better than that obtained by a home nursing visit. Mm. Once they uh, show that to the FDA in the research, then they can expect FDA approval uh, at, for its use in a more general way. So in a way, what you're seeing is trials. Mm -hmm. yeah. for something that down the road might be much more powerful uh, and much more usable. So at this point, all they're really doing is trying to demonstrate that the device improves the monitoring of patients out of the hospital, of or is at least as good as a home uh, visit. Today was the shareholders meeting, and right away they're like, what is the business model for research kit? And Tim Cook it's again goes, no I don't model. need a business That's model right. for everything. Well, we do. Yeah. but I think he, he actually knows that there is a business model, because if ultimately the iPhone can do that kind of uh, reliable testing. Your doctor can say to you, okay, you need to have an Apple Watch and an iPhone that will save you money. Well, they made it insurers open source. Might even, well, but insurers mm -hmm. might even yeah, cover this good, yeah. because you don't need a home right. visit anymore. Suddenly, there is a very good business model also, for this, especially with an aging Apple population. Is, Apple's really happy about those things that are maybe second or third level effects where it's not, oh, this is going to sell a lot more iPhones directly, but it's more like um, this is going to make people feel like Apple is changing yeah. the world, which is part of their brand promise, and right. that makes everybody yeah. happier about Apple. And can you believe what the iPhone does? And that seeps into the success of mm -hmm. Apple as a company in a way that may not be as direct. But, right. you know, I think it's it's Apple likes to show that side of itself. It's, it is it is good PR, but there's also, you know, real world benefit of it. That, and they were happy you know, to say that we're I, doing this privately, I, like I we're believe, collecting your data right. privately. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they had I, to say I, that. I believe that. I believe they're quite sincere in this project. Oh, I, I agree. Too. Yeah. There's a, I do too. It's a, I, I'm also very, very glad that the same uh, the, the the phrase that keeps in this unwritten as yet response about the about the edition watch, it's like the Apple can make whatever they want. They've got the resources, they got the talent, they got the war chest. Whatever they decide that they want to make, they can make it. And so it pleases me greatly. This is actually how I wound up part one of the of my column today. That I'm just very, very pleased that they chose to make these two things that will extend people's lives and ease suffering, which are which is the possible uh, end results of technologies that are this forward thinking. I'm thrilled beyond measure that they're they're putting these things out there. Yeah, in the long run, this is not probably a uh, something that's going to bring medicine to Uganda or to you know poor regions of the southeastern United States. 
this is a beginning that may in the long run have some well, value could, like see, that, that. That's that's interesting too. It could. I I, we, I I talked about this yesterday in the live stream that uh, when I go, when I visit the media lab and see stuff, a lot of the the projects that they're working on is here's a way to outfit a dirt common Android phone so that it actually can give eye tests, and here's a way to outfit an Android phone so that it can give these tests because they don't uh, in a lot of parts of the world they don't have access to medical care, but they do have these dirt cheap Android phones, and if you could find a way to get these five dollar and eighty nine cent little lens kits or whatever or sleds you put into you can f you can give them diagnostic tools that they can use to at least triage uh, uh, someone to decide is it going to be worth the trip to get them to a hospital or not uh, and so this is something that could really plug into that sort of stuff if only apple had dirt cheap phones that were, were actually relevant well, right. in these other parts of the that's world right. well, again, but, no. but, it's a, but it's a good movie and, 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 that may be the, yeah. and that may be the re ultimate right. value of this is for, for research that, then for you can put it in a 50 dollar right. windows phone or android right. phone also let's uh, not discount yeah, the fact and, and that the, we're, we're yeah. mining the um the this incredibly measurable population of people who already have these phones to do research yeah. That, that will help. teach us things yeah. that we might not have even known right. if we weren't monitoring them with mm -hmm. this device in their pocket. That teaches us something that helps everybody, right? It doesn't necessarily well, yeah. have to be the direct monitoring. It's learning, oh, did you know that if this happens, then this happens, yeah. that leads to a breakthrough. If half, you know, if, if 50,000 people with Parkinson's who happen to be well enough off to have an iPhone or have an Apple Watch can you know, record their data for a year and that data ends up providing a cure or something that makes Parkinson's a much more livable disease. That's an incredible win for people who don't have I uh, iPhones and who may never be able to right. afford iPhones. But if it makes their care affordable, you right. know, I, I know plenty of people who are like, oh, well, I'll, I'll never I'll never buy an iPhone because uh, I don't have the money. But I'm but that's in part because I'm spending two thousand dollars a month on medication. And it's like if that if if Apple can do something that eases medication costs, that makes quality of life better for the world, you know, that that's a win. That's that's a genuine win. Yeah. Just a program note, if you're just tuning in now, we uh, Steve has uh, the day off, but we'll do security now later this week. So we thought since we have the time, let's take a little extra time since we've got such a great panel. So we're going to continue Mac Break Weekly a little bit longer. Uh, coming up, your picks of the week. Um, Andy Anako from the Chicago Sun-Times, Jason Snell from SixColors.com, Serenity Caldwell from iMore.com. She's waving to the Meerkat <laughs> folks. <laughs> I am. We have a dual stream going on. It's a little weird. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. Also from iMore.com, Renee Ritchie, Alex Lindsay from Rwanda. Are you Close doing a Meerkat yeah, I'm, too? I'm Meerkatting. So Don't I'm do streaming. a competing Meerkat. <laughs> no, it's it's it's... I'm streaming, you streaming, me streaming. It's a now you're starting to sound like. Uh, this is hurting my head. I stream a, you stream a, me stream a. Very confusing. You sound like Jar Jar Binks. Oh no no. I stream a, you stream a, me stream a. I stream. Timon from the the. Timon. <laughs> it's crazy. Matata. Matata. He's a yeah. Yeah. That's a miracle. And I it's turned it on, word. and there's like 17 people watching. Do you sing? <laughs> I do. She dances, she sings, she acts. I don't serenity. dance well. <laughs> and she mm -hmm. roller derbies. Like she dances well. <laughs> and she's yes. an amazing, what do you call that person that you throw them through the line? What, the, the jammer? Jammer. I, I used to be. One, once upon a time. She's an amazing jammer. <laughs> uh, hello, Russia. Hello, Russia. <laughs> hello, Russia's watching Gundis and the Mir. There is an eyeball. <laughs> There's a strange eyeball coming into Meerkat. Our show today, we're going to take a break, come back with our picks and a demonstration of this Meerkat thing that is all the rage with the kids. But first, let's talk about shaving. Kids, you don't have to watch this. Well, maybe you should, because you know what? It's one of the things, it's one of the rites of passage that uh, the boys go through, I guess girls too at some point, where uh, it's like, oh, really? I got to do that every day for the rest of my life? Harry's makes this such a pleasure. Let me reach down and get my Harry's kit. Harry's is an amazing experience for somebody who has to shave every day. I just take it from me. It starts uh, with the Harry's kit. Now you get they've got a Truman kit, they've got a Winston kit. This is the uh, Truman kit. Every kit though includes uh, a handle, three blades, the uh, either the Harry's shaving foam shaving gel or the Harry's in the tube cream, which I like. Oh yeah. And Oh, yeah. That oh, yeah. cream. Comfort, mint. man. Oh, that mint cream that is minty, so good. That minty, and it's got uh, some African nut in it. It's got... Interesting. Yeah, uh, Makuna and Matata or something. <laughs> and it's just, uh, it's marvelous. Anyway, $15 for the Truman. I'm going to save you even more in a second. Uh, $25 for the Winston, which is a metal engraved handle, which is really sweet. But that just gets you started with your Harry's experience. See, the key to Harry's is 
They decided that they wanted to do direct-to-you uh, blades at a much reduced price from the ridiculously inflated price of the hard of the drugstore blades, like four dollars for Gillette Fusion per blade. When I, I had to put, I, I was buying a Gillette Fusion. I actually had to put the, I, I had it in my basket at Target, and then I looked at it. And I realized it was like fifty bucks for some blades, and I thought I can't do this. I just can't do this. That's when Harry's really kind of got to the forefront. The way that they did this. The way they solved this conundrum is they bought the factory. So there, it turns out there's only really two great factories who are known for their uh, blades. They're both in Germany. Harry's bought one of them. And by, by getting all the output of that factory, they can specify the best blades. They engineer them for sharpness and performance. And then they keep the price really low because they ship them free to your doorstep. So the efficiency cuts the price literally in half literally in half a beautiful clean comfortable shave yeah, i've never cut myself with the harry's blades so partly that's because i always have a new blade i have fresh <laughs> blades all the time what yep. it's like a hovercraft for your face it's, it's like it floats <laughs> it, it floats really is. over your ray you spoken like the guy who hasn't shaved in days I <laughs> leo i shave weekly i'll have you know that uh -huh. and, and i shave before I, I travel because otherwise customs pulls me over um but, but really when I, if if i don't shave before they always want to know what i'm doing and where i'm going and why that's profiling <laughs> that's know, beard is, profiling that's absolutely anti-beardist activity anti-beardist mm -hmm. well i'll tell you one thing if you only shave once a week you, there's more pull because yeah. you've got longer whiskers that's when harry's really makes a big difference you it's, know Phenomenal. And you get such a clean shave, and it's such a nice feeling. I want you to try it. H-A-R-R-Y, harrys.com. Uh, $5 off your first purchase. If you use the offer code MACBREAK, that means $10 to get your Truman kit. That's a pretty good darn deal. You're never going to get a deal like that, I'll tell you. Harry's, well, you are, if you use the offer code MACBREAK at harrys.com. We thank them so much for keeping us hearsuitless, unhearsuit, dehearsuited. <laughs> Ah, the feel ah. of it. <laughs> Jason Snell. I, I had no idea. I just idea. couldn't help myself. I couldn't help it. <laughs> Gentlemen, the hairy shave, it's so smooth. This is what room. happens when Mac break goes long, guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we get punchy. All right, let's do some picks. I want to start with the meerkat because uh, we're running a meerkat right now. Uh, Alex Lindsay, what is meerkat besides a what small desert-dwelling uh, critter <clears throat> from Africa? From Africa. <laughs> This is uh, so. This is meerkat, and okay. um, and uh, well, you can't. You, you you can see your meerkat, and you know why don't I? Meerkat. Why don't I? Uh, for purposes, uh, so you see what it looks like as you stream. So here's my so meerkat. Streaming. Yeah. So I'm I'm looking around and everything else. Now I'm in Rwanda from the, on my iPhone, and I'm streaming to Twitter. That and it Jason, took me show like my 40, show my uh, forty two seconds over the show. You know to do this. I mean, like it was. It's crazy. You push uh, a button, it tweets so, right, and then. It tweets. You see it who's tweets, watching, which is so cool. I, I, I actually really like that. And there's a chat on it, so that people are chatting uh, That's to right me. That's right here. Yeah, from a from a social tie-in, it's it's really really interesting. And the fact that to be now, I do a lot of live streaming, and I know that, that impromptu live streaming does not usually yield very many viewers. Right. Uh, so the idea that in a couple of minutes I have 71 viewers is actually pretty good. <laughs> you know, I that, got 500 you know, I, people that, watching this meerkat stream right now. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so it's. The um, let's see if I can spin this thing around. Yeah, but but I think that this is uh, and I, you know it's it amazing. It's pretty things. solid. I mean, it works. It works pretty well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I have to admit, I, I had it on my phone, and, I, and this morning on the way to work, uh, on the way to the school, I was just in the in the cab, and I just turned it on, and I just couldn't believe that it was coming out smoothly and working and and everything else. And so so anyway, it is. Uh, um, it's so a pretty Jason's amazing. So Jason's watching my meerkat <laughs> right Thanks. now. What are you watching that on, Jason? How are you doing that? Uh, you have to resize the browser uh, to a portrait Got it. Uh, format. So you can watch it on the so, browser. <clears throat> yeah, you can. See, so this is it <laughs> on the, not resized. Right? This is why this is the perspective we're normally used to having. But if you resize the window uh, to a portrait, then you and, get and much then better size. When you, so you can schedule a stream ahead of time, but uh, or you can, and then it'll tweet out, oh, tune in, as I did. At, tune in to 1250. Right. Leo's going to stream. Or that you can just start a stream and it'll tweet it out. Um, yep. And does, does it continue to read to tweet? Like I've been on for forty minutes now. Does it continue to? People want to look at uh, Serenity. I'm gonna. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Get me off of there. One. 
Did I, you start I, one? I just You're doing it too. This, and started this. this is like Meerkat Inception. Oh, boy. This is really cool. <laughs> well, now I gotta find that everyone, one. Everyone pointed the camera. <clears throat> everyone pointed the camera right now. We'll, we'll oh, have wow. some Meerkat. We're all broadcasting wow. our yes. individual shows now, Leo. Well, you, can, you can do like live action this bullet time. You got version. so many cameras around here. Studio. I know. So yeah. um, eight people are watching right now. What? So have you been using it for a while? No, no, I, I, I just, I, I've been hearing about it. Everyone keeps on telling me, oh, you got to look at, you know, because what I do, everyone keeps on telling me that I have to uh, look at Meerkat. And uh, <laughs> and so I finally, I had it, I, I downloaded oh. it immediately and I just didn't get around to it. And I, when I opened it up, I just thought it was so cool that, anyway, that's why it's my pick. There's there a we little now we've got serenities. There's a little bit of latency <laughs> on it. What is it, about half a minute, 40 seconds, something like yeah, that? Yeah, it's probably about yeah, that. Something like that. I mean, it's... um. I, I can't tell because you're not on. But we're looking at serenities here, here. now. There we go. Now, eight now eight we're looking seconds. at Alex. That's Alex. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna snap. Okay, I snapped. This is a little bit insane. It's Meerkat Inception. We need yeah. to kick. The people who are listening to the audio only her? version of this podcast are completely confused. Oh, they're they're very now. confused. I've got 15 right now. Yep. So I've got 28. I'm I'm beating you, Renee. Peter Cohen. Oh, so you high, can high, receive high. a Meerkat. That was probably about 15, a, 20 seconds. Yeah. You, you can receive a Meerkat on a browser. You can receive it on a phone. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> It is uh, not Android yet. It's iOS only. And it really went viral uh, just in the last couple of weeks, uh, partly because of Product Hunt. But then yesterday, we saw that a number of people were going to Meerkat the keynote, which is kind of silly since it was, it's already been streamed. It was Meerkat road rage because people were trying to Meerkat the same watch table and yelling, get out of my Meerkat way. Yeah. Oh, no. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was almost like there was almost brawls. Oh, that's oh, terrible. I'm definitely going to use this for uh, for Derby. This is actually, this is really exciting. So because... what's great about it is, yeah, you can do uh, kind of ad hoc streaming. We yeah. certainly spent a lot of money to design a streaming studio. I don't really need Meerkat since I spend plenty of time on streaming vi live streaming video. But <laughs> there's something personal and intimate about it, about it as well. So now I'm going to uh, meerkat Jason's meerkat. I'm meerkatting Leo, um, meerkatting Jason. Wait, wait, wait. Meerkatting. 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 <laughs> All right, how about that? O-M-G. Oh, my God. Oh Maybe this God. is the way we should do the show from now on. <laughs> I know, right? It's a multi-camera. You know, I, I, I do think that this is going to be something that's going to transform news. I mean, I think that's the thing. Oh, is yeah. Something's going to happen, and suddenly there's going to be meerkats. You know, it's, it's going to be a swarm of meerkats. You know, on, on a, uh, you know, on... <laughs> Uh, you know, those those types There's of things. There's the swarm and of meerkats right there. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, exactly. Look at that. So the interesting uh, thing is that Twitter just bought a company that does exactly this. Is it called Pumba? Right. Mm -hmm. uh, an yeah, an, uh, it's, it's Pumba. Periscope. No, it's Periscope? It Periscope. Yeah. And uh, I think that unfortunately they just missed the boat because meerkat is obviously snagged the, uh, the and, everyone had the, and it yeah, is about twitter without twitter it means yeah. nothing right they integrate it right into into twitter remember um quick leo when either you or cali would let's say, I'm touch on phones right now. On yeah the, quick nokia, i used quick yeah. and, and social cam or just yeah. social these? cam yeah. you can save okay now these? this is what's weird you can save it to your phone but what you can't do is save it to the internet there is no it meerkat is well, a little bit like snapchat whole, i mean well, you I could think, post it somewhere Presumably. If you wanted to. Yeah, yeah, you could Yeah. You could post it somewhere. And I think that part of that is also the quality of the video that you post will be much higher quality than what it would have recorded from the live stream, as well as that's a whole other problem of scale. So if they start scaling and they didn't have somewhere to put all those videos, they're now in YouTube's business right. of trying to manage all of that. So it took me it took me a second to figure that out. I was like, oh, right, they don't want to start that way because... No, I mean, that's I mean, a very expensive that. thing to do is to yeah. serve all those videos. Around yeah. the company. Josh uh, Schrammer's from Tidbits is saying he's watching all of our videos at the same time. Yeah. Uh, who is Adam Hanks? Josh Schrammer's centers. Oh, how funny. Very weird. Your catception, it's happening. Yeah. I have used all of these, and I've used, you know, social <laughs> cam and quick and, and all of that. Um, and I'm sure this will be just another flash in the pan. But they did do some things that... He's not meerkatting. He's not, I appreciate Andy's like Andy's totally not, not interested in, in, in this. No. Business. Andy's he's looking at like that. Come on, Andy. Not, he will not bend. No, I, it's I, like we just told him we're not going to college anymore. Here's the thing about what, uh, what I'm not going to college. I'm going to man I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, uh, I, I, just, no. I just think that you should set yourself a limit that if the juggling does not work out after one year, <laughs> maybe you should <laughs> take your job just, at your uncle's lumber yard. No, what I actually really like about this I don't know how Go ahead. It's <laughs> it's integrated. Yeah, uh, sorry, chat room. I turned off my Meerkat feed because that's okay. I, I it got Jason now. Um, <laughs> but uh, I really like how easy this is to set up um, and how quickly that I can get a good stream yeah. going almost immediately and hook in with Twitter. There's like UStream is nice, but there's the separate chat room and it's kind of insane and I don't know. It's it's complicated. If you want to stream anything good, you need to pay for a subscription. Like again, I'm thinking about roller derby here because my mind. 
mind always goes to there roller derby. There is a kind of neat Live real time streaming? aspect to this and Li- instant yeah. aspect mm. to this. Live streaming roller derby games is really difficult because you could you, do this on your. Yeah. You could attach this to your your, oh, cam. your uniform. Oh yeah, I absolutely could. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'd probably put it in an otter box first. Jammer, but, jammer cam. Uh, yeah. Jammer cam. No, jammer cam. It's now, really I noticed cool. that it really prefers vertical, right? You don't want to do horizontal. I'm going to do horizontal right now, and I think this is going to screw things up a little bit. Um, but it does seem to prefer vertical. And I'm doing horizontal right now because I you? just can't do it. I will not. Like Andy the won't use Meerkat. Strange. I will not Will not shoot vertical. That's all I'm saying. I'm a yeah, fan of vertical not, video. I mean, in, in I the browser, it won't let me uh, see really? it in it uh, horizontal. No, when oh. I resize it, it's forcing it in portrait. Okay, so then if I turn so, it like well, this. Alex, can you, can you yell at the developers and make them fix this? Mm-hmm. I feel like an animal. Yeah. Well, and I have to point out <clears throat> that uh, another pick uh, uh, of Alex's comes in great, uh, very handy. This is that kind of flat foldable tripod that uh, you can carry in oh, your yeah. pocket. Let me show. Can you show oh, this, yeah. Jason? Yeah. You get it yeah. on everyone's meerkat. So yeah. this, yeah. this is a cats. really handy thing to have if you're gonna if you're gonna have meerkat. Who makes? Who, is that a? Uh, is that Gorilla Pod? And Frodo. Is it Joby? Oh, Gorilla Pod. Gorilla. Yeah, it's, Joby. it's a Joby, Joby product. Makes. Yeah, I think it's a Joby. Three product. meerkats going. Can we get a 3D model of and this? And so you can easily put your hmm. phone in it. But Joby, in their infinite wisdom, does not make it get big enough for for portrait. You can only do landscape. <laughs> so. No, um, no meerkat, no, no meerkatting for that tripod. But this is a, but it, yeah, well, I don't know. Why I mean, that... meerkat always get the fuzzy end of the lollipop. <laughs> <laughs> it also uh, lets you use front facing or rear camera. I like that. It's um, quick, quick rotation. Too. Yeah, and it's very quick. I, uh, anyway, I think a good pick, and it's free. And well, it does cost you a little bit of dignity. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I also <laughs> Eight have to dignity wonder. Points. It, it, it's not what are we cheap looking to at? stream. Alex, turn the camera around. You're on the wrong camera. <laughs> we want to see no, you. Oh, uh, well, I was showing the stuff that I was using. Hold on. Yeah, okay. Oh. He was doing that on purpose. <laughs> it's acceptable. I, yeah. I also, but I think that QuickHead uh, would show you the people watching, right, and have yep. chat. I think yeah. it does a lot of the same things. At QuickHead. It does some of them. Yeah. Um, we can show the studio audience, which has yeah. dwindled. Yeah. Well, we can, <laughs> Sorry, we went really long We're today, guys. In hour five of the telephone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, our Mac break telethon. If you're tuning in for security now, Steve's under the weather. We will do it later, and we'll put it on the calendar Thursday or Friday. We're working on a time that we can uh, we can do security now. So that's why we're going, getting to go a little long. We had such a great panel that I could not resist doing this. And this is another another time that the 10-1 design Hard clip comes in handy that yeah. you recommended, Serenity. I like um, this little thing. You can because you can mount this now. Right there on your, uh, mm-hmm. on your. Uh, Peter is a smart, smart accessory developer. Yes. Look at that. Is this a guy named Peter? Huh. Peter yeah, Skinner. Ten, Peter mm-hmm. Skinner. Ten One Design. Ten One started with a with a stylus. The Pogo. The Pogo, which I still love and yep. use, and now this little silly thing, which I bought because you recommended it, Serenity, has proven its value in meerkatting. <laughs> so now you hey, can be the keyboard. And, dollars. I can meerkat. I just realized, so a bunch of my cartoonist friends used to do live streams where they would like have to While they're drawing. position, yeah, exactly, yeah. position their camera and weird things. I'm like, you just put your iPhone up against yeah. and now you can see what, yeah, yeah. That's, that's neat. Uh, so there's Alex Lindsay's pick all the way from Rwanda. He's streaming, we're streaming, we're all streaming. Uh, would you like to pick something, Mr. Renee Ritchie? I'll I think we'll start my meerkat. Stop meerkat. Stop your meerkat. I'll keep my meerkat going. I'm a little bit worried about saving this to my phone. It's it's going to be kind of a big file. I'm just saving mine. I don't know if we'll do anything with it, but yeah. it's for right. posterity. I'll post it on YouTube if I can upload it. <laughs> and you See can watch this ex spaces. post facto. So my, and I apologize to Jason. As I was meerkatting, I forgot to paste it into the show notes. But uh, my Google Calendar has... yes. Asterisk, finally, asterisk, <laughs> yes. appeared on iOS after Phew. being rumored for a while. And we use Google Calendar at work. Uh, we run off Google Apps. Uh, and it's always been really annoying because I use Google over Exchange on my iPhone, which means I have to go to that stupid Google website on every device and check off the calendars I actually want to show up. And I forget that's how you do it. So I just think my calendars are missing right. all the you time. Right, you only get one. And, yeah, and yeah. It's, it's super frustrating. But now there's a Google Calendar app. Uh, it does look like Google's design language, which some people don't like, but I think is perfectly serviceable. Like it's a really well-produced app, nicely animated. And it just show. I would... I loaded it, downloaded it, asked me which of my Google accounts I wanted to use. I checked off my personal one. I checked off my um, my Mobile Nations one. All my calendars were there. 
Uh, it's the colors aren't the prettiest. It's you know what that's material design. You get it looks exactly the same as the Android yeah, one. Yeah, um, the thing my problem with material design is that I find a little bit like Windows Phone that it's so beautiful to the extent that once in a while it's monotonous and I'd like yeah. a little bit. Yeah, of, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. And like the color, I'd like a little bit of that. But it, it, Google Calendar is an AK forty seven of calendars. It's a battleship of calendars. It is serviceable. It will you can drop the Google Calendar in the water and it will still work. Uh, and it's just been great. Um, I don't know if, I, if I'll keep using it because I've been fine having calendar.app or Fantastico pull stuff, but I like the idea that we can finally get it. All right. And it's free. Yes. So like, well, like all the what do you, How do you search for it? Uh, it's searching is hard right now because there's so many calendar apps. And because right. there was no Google Calendar app, a lot of people put Gmail or Google fake in ones. the name. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so I would recommend just going to the, like, you can type it in and there is a Google. Uh, just get a, all the Google a, a stuff. search. But again, it pulls up a ton of results. Yeah. Or you go to tap to a Google app and then tap on Google as a developer. That's what you do. And yeah. scroll to the bottom. Yeah. yeah. And it's down yeah. there. That's a way to do it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, Google Calendar, if you're at all committed to Google, then it is an excellent app for you to get. It's better than using the native iPhone calendar and just mm -hmm. I still like it up Fantastic L better because even the, the yeah. Google Calendar displays really nicely, but Fantastic L is so fast to get things into and yeah. to get things out of. And the other problem is I'm still split on this. Like uh, a lot of people had Outlook and Outlook did everything in one app. Uh, and on mobile, we're doing these separate apps. But would I be happier if Google had like a Google desktop app that was mail plus calendar? I could just go back and forth between tabs quickly. I don't know. But I do like if I need to like really get a googly crunchy calendar experience. I can launch the Google Calendar app. Well, I want a Googly crunchy experience. It's like granola. <laughs> mm -hmm. Serenity, I don't know if we told you, but we do pics every week. Yes, I actually put, I just put mine into the uh, the Google nice, Doc. thank you. I'm so sad, actually, because my pick is, it was in my luggage, and it's sitting at the at my <laughs> friend's apartment, but it is not here. My pick is, is in my luggage. All right, so I have been testing um, some Bluetooth speakers recently, because I went to CES, and part of the fun of CES is being like, all right, let's, you know, let's see some, some products that would work well with my phone and my Mac. Um, and the thing that stood out to me is uh, at, at CES, and now that I've gotten a chance to play it I, with it, I'm kind of in love with it, uh, is the Fugu, which is this little, it's this jam box sized speaker that is waterproof, snowproof, dust proof, and if you get the right jacket, car proof, aka but is it you derby can run proof? over it. Yes, it is. <laughs> so I brought it to a derby. So it comes, all right, so. Blood, hair, yeah. teeth, bare, right pretty out. much. It's jammer proof. Bare, bare bones. This is a speaker that is about the size of a jam box that has 40 hours of battery life that connects over Bluetooth. Wow. Um, and also happens to be a bunch of things proof. Um, in addition, it sounds great. It sounds, it's much louder than the jam box and you can strap it to pretty much anything. It comes with a tripod adapter, basically. So you can stick it on a tripod. There's a strap that you can wrap it around your bike. You can wrap it around a tree or you can wrap it around what I did at my last derby practice, which is one of our poles. So nice. you can basically put it Rock anywhere. And roll. Yeah, and it's just, it's really nice. I charged it this, I've been testing the sport, which I charged once two weeks ago and I have yet to run out of battery. Um, which wow. granted, I've only been playing with it in like one or two hour increments, and that makes sense for a forty hour battery life. But like, I I seriously have to you know do some crazy things. Yeah, um, chat room just asked if it's sandproof. It is sandproof. I haven't tested it. I tested it in snow. I've tested it in a little <laughs> bit of dirt, and I've tested throwing it in water. Um, in theory, it's supposed to be waterproof to three feet. But when I talked to uh, the folks, they're like. Technically, it's closer to about 10 to 12 feet, but the Bluetooth signal starts to haze out after three or four. Um, so I really like it. It's uh, 200 bucks uh, for a core, and they also come with these swappable jackets. So you can get like a nice looking speaker um, if you want to get like, I think it's called the Fugu style. Um, if you want a nice like clutch like speaker to put next to your television and make it look fancy. Uh, but you can also get the sport for everyday use, and then you can get the tough jacket, which makes it look like, again, they, they have a video somewhere on uh, on YouTube where they run it over with a car. It's like, mm. no big deal. It's fine. Um, but yeah, I, I really, really like the speaker, um, and I've been testing it for about two, three weeks. And then they're coming out with one, I think, later this year in April uh, called the XL, which is about the size of the big jam box also has 40 hours of battery life and um, something like, I don't know, I'm I'm enough of a music person to really enjoy it, but um, all of the subwoofers is kind of crazy. What is it? Eight symmetrically placed drivers for wow. the for the big uh, the big uh, the big Fugu. What I really like about this speaker actually is that it has um, 
It has drivers and, um, and speakers on all sides of the device. So it's just as loud pointing one direction as it is another direction as it is standing on the side. It's not like my real problem with the jam box is you have to position it a certain way to, in order to get the good sound. And if you have it flipped, then you're like, well, why can't I hear anything? Um, so yeah, I, I think it's pretty nifty. I've been recommending it to anybody who's like, I need a good Bluetooth speaker. And Leo, just, uh, just a quick little tidbit here. Uh, Father Robert reviewed uh, the the speakers. That's what I thought. I thought we'd done a review of this, <clears throat> I, but I was spelling buy. it wrong. I kept searching for <laughs> the blowfish fugu. It's F U G O O. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. He right. gave it a buy. He gave it a buy. He liked the fugu. I remember that. I was gonna. I was trying to find it this whole time. Thank you, Jason. Mm -hmm. Jason Howell, our producer. Uh, Jason Snell, yes. our guest, do you have a pick? Uh, I just came up with one because uh, your backup pick to Alex's pick was my pick. Oh, so well, you can do that. I'm going to pick Alto's Adventure because I don't yes. think you guys have yes. done Alto's Adventure yet on Mac Break. It is a fantastic. Does it endless, come in a little tin can? It's an endless snowboarding game oh. app for iOS. It is beautiful. It's like a lot. There are a lot of endless uh, skiing and snowboarding games out there, but it is beautiful. The music is fantastic. It is addictive oh. to play. Serenity's handing me. Serenity's her, got like one hundred and forty so thousand. Um, my high score is like. Oh my god. You play this a lot, obviously. It is a. It yeah. is she my latest wrote the game guide addiction. To it. I did. I did wrote write a. I wrote this? a game guide that's on iMore on yeah. how to do all kinds of things. So you it's, just tap to jump. Okay, guide me. All right, so nice you start you, you start skiing, and then you tap to jump over things. <clears throat> you collect oh, you llamas. Oh, this is like, uh, it's like that bicycling uh, game. Yeah, yeah it's I like mean, a lot it, of things. It's in the gen genre. you got to hold to... Yeah, tap hold, and oh, hold no. to, <laughs> to flip. <laughs> Although that was a nice little juke move you yeah. had to go on. <laughs> so, it, it, so it's two bucks. There are no in-app purchases. Oh, you, you, you buy it, you get it. You do earn coins that you can use to buy things in the game, but you can't buy them with in-app purchases. You just earn them by playing the game. And one of the nice things about it is a lot of these endless runs uh, get boring after a while because you're right. like, oh, i got to go on forever before I get my next thing. What Altos does is every level is three tasks you need to perform, and it's basically three snowboarding tricks. And they are, they are, they scale with your, your, um, level, your, your level so of proficiency. So right it, now, there's I'm always better some, off just going. Yeah, right? there's always yes. where you hit a rock. Um, it's bad. Oh. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun, and it's uh, easy to play, and it doesn't get boring. And that's, I, I couldn't endorse it more highly than that. And, and it's it. beautiful. And it changes from day to night. There's oh, yeah, you can watch the sun go down, and if yeah. you ski long enough, you uh, watch it come back up. It's pretty awesome. There you go. Now you're getting it. Oh. It's all kinds of fun. And you hit the snow. <laughs> <laughs> this looks fun. That's yeah. great. Alto's, Alto's Adventure. Alto's Adventure. $2, but from no Snowman app. on the App Store. Thank you for letting me play. Mm -hmm. uh, Andy Inako, your pick of the week. Uh, mine is something that I'm, it's kind of pricey, but it's something I really, really like. Uh, last year around this time, my pick of the week was this Olympus OMD EM1, which is one of the nicest things I have ever bought in my life. I've been I've shot thousands and thousands of pictures with this. Absolutely in love with it. It's exactly the sort of camera that I like. It runs. It uses the micro four thirds lens system and the sensor system, which means that it's the body is nice and compact. Uh, and because, unlike other mirrorless systems, it has a really nice library of lenses for it. Uh, I actually bought like the nice, uh, uh, like equivalent of the 80 to 300 millimeter f 2.8. Shot use this to shoot uh, pictures inside uh, uh, Pax uh, Pax East uh, Gaming Con over the weekend. I was just getting so many pictures I would not have been able to get otherwise. Uh, but I really love it. So uh, app. Uh, Olympus has always had like a sort of a not a, a more consumer-ish model. This is but this has always been like their 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 uh, their pitch to uh, pro photographers. The EM5, the the OMD EM5 has always been there. We're going to make something that's a little bit more affordable, but also a little bit more practical for a consumer. Uh, so the buttons are not quite as as comfortable as on the pro model. Uh, also, whereas the uh, oh, the EM1 has just a simple like flip out screen. The EM5 has the the full like flippy outy, turny aroundy selfie sort of screen uh, like that. Uh, but also, but because this is one year newer, this is the Mark II. They came with the, they released it last year. This is the updated version of it. It has uh, better video uh, even than the than the so-called Pro model. Uh, it shoots at uh, 77 megabits per second as opposed to 24 megabits per second. Alex will be very interested to know that it outputs uncompressed HDMI through its HDMI port. Uh, and shoots full uh, 1080 uh, uh, video. It also has a really cool feature where um, 
the one feature that it has so many features that are shared between the Pro One and this one. One of them is this absolutely killer five axis stabilization that's inside the body, so it works with any lens. I have been able to like handhold shots of like one fifth per second, and it's razor sharp because it is compensating for every piece of movement in there. It is insane how uh, you can you can shoot at like low ISOs in low light, and it just plain works. But they they came up with this really clever idea. Because the image sensor, the, the 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 camera is able to move the image sensor around, you know, to just to to compensate for jitter, some clever group of engineers thought, huh, you know what we could do? We could have a special shooting mode so that it will take a series of eight photos and move the sensor a little bit each time. And we could do some math and then convert those eight pictures into an actual 40 megapixel image. Uh, you definitely need to have it on a tripod for that to work, but it actually works. You wind up with a for real 40 megapixel image. Uh, again, it's taking it's it's synthesizing this from eight images. So don't think that you can take a picture of you know your family reunion. It people will be blurry because they're moving around. But for landscapes, for buildings, and just for the fact that hey, it doesn't cost extra money for this. It's just a cool feature. It's a cool feature. Um, it's there are a lot of like mirrorless cameras out there. The Sony's are really really nice. Uh, uh, I, I think it's really between uh, Sony, Fuji, and Olympus. I happen to like the Olympus cameras because to me they're the best common the, the best uh, hybrid between having something that is nice and compact that I can easily just stick in whatever laptop bag I'm using and take with me wherever I go, and yet still having that sort of look and feel. That, that sort of experience of using uh, an SLR of you know looking through the viewfinder uh, and being able to set things with buttons however I want it. Uh, so it's not cheap. It's uh, about a, a list for eleven hundred dollars without a lens. But if you're shop if you're shopping for a nice SLR, you're probably looking at like a Nikon seventy one hundred or a, a Canon equivalent. That's probably about what you're going to spend anyway. Definitely look at a camera like this because. It costs the exact same amount of money. It takes pictures that are just about as good, I would say, maybe even better, given the way the features are, are done. And this is, you know, look, look how tiny this is. This is, here's my phone, and that, there's, there disappears the camera. It's that small. Uh, so, I mean, that, that, that's the reason why when the time came last year to buy, like, my first really good camera in, like, 10 years, I bought this because I can remember every single time I left my Nikon uh, APS-C SLR at home, even though I'm spending a week in Barcelona and London because I just don't want to carry this big honking SLR around my neck because I can't be able to fit it inside like any of my carry-on bags. So that's my pick of the week. I, I, I've been using it for about a week. Uh, I used it. Uh, did the dumb thing you're not supposed to do of hey let's take this let's take this out to PAX East you've you literally took this out of the box a few days ago you've barely shot 30 frames with it but hey let's do another thousand frames of it in this very high intensity uh, 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 situation left it on auto and it took great pictures most of the time love it it's it's a fantastic uh, camera that's the one we brought on our last trip and I love it and you know I moved to the Sony because I wanted a full frame sensor but there is right. nothing that bet bests the Olympus UI. Um, there's just so many good features, and Sony even, you know, licensed their uh, five-axis uh, image stabilization. It, it, so it is killer. It was like, yeah, it, it is everything I wanted this camera to be. Yeah, and yes, it does video as well. What camera doesn't these days, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, so this was your pick, Jason. So you can help me out uh, sure. on this one. Um, Office for the Mac hasn't been updated since 2011. Yes, that's right. But now we've got Office for Mac 2016 preview, and it's going to come out this summer. This the you fall, can get it now. the the, the uh, actual uh, app will be out. They say in the second half of 2015. Although I've heard some say as late as fall 2015. Mm, interesting. Mm. But uh, you can get the preview right now, and if you want to download it for free, you can. Yep. You don't have to have an Office account to use not, it. Not until it goes final. I did uh, log into my Office account, and it will use that, which means you'll be able to save to OneDrive right. and things like that. It looks a lot like Office, Office on Windows, Windows yeah, it which does. I guess it's got is the, the goal, It's got right? the color bar at the bottom that tells yep. you what app you're using, and it's got the tabbed interface at the top. Um, Jason, it looks you so could much show my screen because uh, that would actually be the... It looks so much nicer there you go. than look at that. It looks yeah. so much nicer than um than the existing version. Yeah. Uh the beta's a little bit pokey. I'm hoping they'll uh, speed it up as they get it closer yeah, to There's final. nothing worse than a word processor that actually uh, doesn't keep up with your typing yeah. mm -hmm. process. Which I find that that is the case with Word for me. But um but it looks great. Um and uh it's good to see it. If you minimize the uh the tab uh, ribbon by clicking on one of the tabs, it yeah. does start to look like you're running Windows, 
because those uh, tabs suddenly look like they're Windows uh, menus. But uh, it looks these, good. These are the uh, this is the ribbon, the ribbon interface, yeah. and you do that, and suddenly it. Uh, if you click twice, it looks it goes a little away. bit like you're using a Windows window with a menu bar in there. It does, but, doesn't it? What uh, is that, all this stuff? The cruft up here. Yeah, there's yeah. some extra bonus stuff. Well, that's very Yosemite, right? Where you can collapse the toolbar oh, up yeah. into that top level. Yeah. Um. So there's a, a a floppy disk icon, classic for saving. Right. <laughs> Undo, redo. Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, it it looks it looks really nice, and it's nice to see uh, Microsoft bring it up to up to date with. Uh, with the Mac, and there are a few new features here and there, and all of them. Word's got a multi-user collaboration mode now that it didn't have, and it supports threaded commenting, which it, which the Windows version does, but the the Mac version didn't. Um, the me it also means that Microsoft is really bringing the Mac up to parity with what they're doing on Windows and iOS, because the Office apps for iOS are actually really great. Right. And uh, and so now the Mac versions will be sort of in the same generation of tool as the iOS version. So this is Word. This is Excel. Uh, it's PowerPoint. It's one is, and then OneNote and Outlook, which have, which have already been out, been for out a while. are a right, part of this right. install too. Is there a big update to, to the Outlook, or is it the same one we've it's had? It's the same one we know, okay. more or less. Okay. PowerPoint, I think, looks really benefits from the much more refined interface that is in Office. Hardly anybody, I think, who uses a Mac would want to use. Well, I always PowerPoint. used it because when I was at IDG, all of our corporate they presentations were in PowerPoint. Yeah. <laughs> It's good reason to so leave it. Some perspective mm -hmm. on yeah. number one reason to have PowerPoint is to is to download it so you can get a proper conversion to Keynote. Right, right. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's yeah, Keynote's yeah. so much better. Which I use. Although I have to say, this new PowerPoint is not nearly as annoying. No, it, it doesn't look so better. PowerPoint. -y. It, looks, it, it looks a lot better. Yeah. It, it really, I think, is the app that has benefited the most yeah. from the, the facelift of the interface. It looks a lot better. And you know, there's some neat stuff in Excel. It, finally, now if you click your cursor around in Excel, it actually animates the little selection thing flies across the screen, which I find deeply disturbing. But is what <laughs> it's how it works on Windows, right. so it's only right for it to work on the Mac. And yeah. there's some uh, good new features that they've added. But I, you know, being on the same generation of app on all the platforms is a good thing and the mac's finally going to get there with yay. this version yay uh and and you know it's interesting because uh i satya nadella the new ceo uh at uh, microsoft has very clearly pointed out that microsoft wants to be wherever its users are and you've seen that on the ipad with the uh the office apps in fact they came out on the ipad before they came out on the surface um but he also has said but well, we want the best experience of microsoft products to always be on windows but I have to say, this parity with Windows would be nice. And they've always been kind of out of sync. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 2011. Well, in 2011, they did add the macro support back in, which was kind of a big deal because <laughs> it was gone in, tw in 2009. Uh, but this, is, th this, feels, this feels the most current that Mac Office has ever felt. Well, and there honestly. is an opportunity here because um, Apple has stripped down its iWork package. Pages doesn't do as much as it used to do. Uh, numbers doesn't do as much as it used to do. So if you need a power tool and you're missing some of the features, this might be the opportunity. And, and I know a lot of people don't like this idea of, of renting software like Adobe's Creative Cloud, but you know, right. for $100 it's a year, you it's get bad, you get yeah. Office and you get all of Office. And that's pretty cool. I yeah. pay, I get uh, I get to have the Office Home, Office 365 Home, and it's so... Uh, yeah. It's a seven bucks a month. I can't remember what it is, but yeah. I get five yep. installations. And, yeah, and exactly. One of them or all of them could be Mac. So I've got it on Windows. I've got it on iPad. I've got it on uh, Apple. That's kind of nice. Yeah. Not that I ever use it, but if I worked for IDG, I'd be yeah, happy. you'd have to be <laughs> opening PowerPoint all the time. <laughs> I use Excel. I like Excel a lot. Other than the charts, I use charts uh, numbers for charts because numbers charts are beautiful. It's pretty. Yes. Yes. But, but Excel, most other things I will use Excel for. Although I use Google Sheets a lot more for that stuff now. Too. Oh, that's interesting. But if but if you want a power tool, and I know it's our finance department, well, they want Excel. They want yeah. pivot I had to install. Yeah, they want pivot, pivot tables. tables. Yeah. I had to install Excel on uh, Excel on yeah. Lisa's uh, iMac, 5K iMac. But because you know when you're doing finance. This is the standard. And you mentioned the 5K iMac. All of the assets in Office are now Retina, ah, which they weren't before nice. because it was 2011. Who knew there was a Retina Mac in 2011? Nice. So, it, it, yeah, it looks great. The other thing that uh, Microsoft has done, which I think is really interesting with the Office subscription, is unlimited storage in OneDrive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not not one terabyte. Apparently, if you, use, if you use a lot, they, they like call you up and say, are you sure? And you say <laughs> yes, and they're like, all right. Well, if I go to my OneDrive because <laughs> I'm a subscriber, I see 10 terabytes is my limit. But I, and I don't know how I would fill up 10 terabytes to begin with, but they, I'm told that if you get to 10, they'll give you another yeah, 10. Yeah, keep so meerkatting, Leo. Meerkat right there. Yep. Meerkat to my OneDrive. Mm -hmm. Meerkat to the way. Hey, boy, this is fun. I would like to go for another three hours, but <laughs> yeah, I don't know if anybody would listen. So <laughs> let's just uh, wrap this up right here. You guys are so great. It's so nice to have you in studio. This is so much fun. Come yeah. back anytime. <laughs>
You know, your parents would love it if you were closer. <laughs> just oh, saying. I only get that every week. I'm just saying. <laughs> I know. And the grandkids. Uh, Serenity Caldwell. She's at <laughs> imore.com. Uh, and uh, is uh, a really, uh, I think, one of the most uh, fun people we have on the show. And I'm so glad you came back. Well, thank you, Leo. It's us. it's fun. I, as I said, this is my first time in the Twit Studio. So it's, Welcome. it's kind of... Lunch. We got so lunch shiny. set up for you in the other room. Mm. I think that I think we do. I hope I'm not yeah. Oh, yeah. promising something yeah. we don't have. I was promised lunch. <laughs> yes, I saw lunch while you were reading about Squarespace. Uh huh. You see, lunch uh -huh. came. Mm. Uh, same for you, Renene, Renenity, <laughs> Renenity <laughs> Richie, Renee Richie. Great to have you. Thank you so much. Yeah, and I'm so glad you could give us a report from the demo room. Absolutely. Uh, that's that's nice to hear what it's like to actually touch this stuff. Mm -hmm. Alex Lynch. Alex Lindsay is, I don't know what you're looking at. <laughs> My eyes are up here. Alex Lindsay is in Rwanda. Kilgali, are you coming back? I thought you were coming back last week. I thought I was. Oh, I, I, I'm going to be here, and then I'm going to be in um, New York, and then Pittsburgh, and then, and then I'll be back right, right. before, uh, right near the end of the end of the month. And, uh, and right after this, I'm going to play around with this meerkat, and I'm going to walk around the studio in the school. So if, if Excellent. Can, uh, so uh, that, uh, another right, stream out. coming from Alex. Follow him. At Alex, A L E X L I N D S A Y, like the former mayor of New York, if that helps. Wow. Deep cut. <laughs> Deep, Deep cut. cut. No relation that I know of. Deep cut. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, uh, Andy Anako. Always a pleasure. Chicago Sun Times. Let's go uh, for four hours. Let's go for four I, hours. I'm so <laughs> tempted. I do not want to stop. This is so much fun. Uh, always a pleasure. What are you working on, on the, for the uh, Sun Times today? Uh, part one came, what just went up this afternoon. Part two will be up of uh, the of Bounty's events going to be up on Wednesday. On Thursday, it's a nice piece on everything that I learned about from wearing the Moto 360 for six months. I think that'll be very helpful for people who are considering buying an Apple Watch. Well, it's so great to have you too, Andy, and I. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry that you didn't come out for the event, but maybe the next one. Maybe the next one, and it, and, and 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 hey, you know, it's it makes up for it that like I can't think of any other group of people that I could spend three hours talking about this stuff with. <laughs> it went by guys. like that. Like, it went by like that. Like Jason, that. Like that. Jason Snell, always a pleasure. Great to have you as well. He's just Happy down the road. I'm just down we the road. Expect to see more of you. I'll I see hope. you later. I love having you in the studio. <laughs> Things going well at Six Colors. Yeah, we're having a great time. Six months. Uh, next week will be six months since I launched the site. And so I love just it. Right by that. Mm -hmm. Apple invited you to the event. Yeah. That shows you still have the respect. I, I appreciate their invite, and yeah. I I hope to get uh, reviewing on the MacBook and the Apple Watch at some point too. So, well, you know we will be, but we <laughs> buy them. So yes. If you can't get one on loan, come up here. We'll, we'll, we'll work online. something out. All right. Hey, thanks for joining us, everybody. Thanks for a very long Mac Break Weekly. If you're still listening, <laughs> did we break our record, Leo? Did we break our oh, record? Oh, yeah, easy. All right, nice. Two hours and 48 minutes. That's, I don't think we've ever gone that long. But, you know, I, it felt like nothing. Thank you so long, so much for uh, being here, everybody. We do Mac Break Weekly at 11 a.m. Pacific. That's 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. Yeah, we are now in summertime. So for those of you who come uh, into summertime a little later... Uh, note that there's a little bit of a time change for you, at least for a few weeks. Seventeen, uh, uh, 1800 UTC. Uh, you can, if you can't figure it out how to watch live, don't worry. All three hours will be posted on demand at twit.tv slash MBW or wherever you get your podcasts like iTunes. And of course I have to point out, we've got great apps. We didn't do them, but our wonderful, uh, third party developers have done apps on iOS, Android, Windows phone, Roku, and we're grateful to them and uh, encourage you to get one of those apps because uh, that means that, you know, you'll never miss another Mac Break Weekly. I want to thank also the folks in the chat room. We don't thank them enough. They're great. We participate with them. We have uh, brisk dialogues <laughs> with them. Sometimes we yell at each other at chat room. I know I do that, but you guys are great. You're a big part of what we do. And uh, I should point out, although we provide the server, the chat room really is a community uh, effort. It's policed and moderated by the community. Uh, those are all volunteers in there, and uh, your presence uh, each and every day is always appreciated. So thank you. IRC.twit.tv if you'd like to be in there. Thanks for being here. Now, I don't know what you're going to tell the boss. Back to work. Because break time is over.